Hello there, my name is Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations and thank you for joining my stream today. Uh, quick hello to some folks. Hello Adam, hello Michael, hello Dana, hello Jay, hello Sean, Tobias, Hot Rod, Madeline, uh, Chip, Ron. Uh, have I missed anyone? I think that was everyone there. Um, thank you to... Uh, Everyone uh, who is uh, is watching at the moment, uh, I hope all of the uh, audio and video are okay. We know about these little dots. These little dots. There's a dot just there. There's a dot just there. Um, yep. So uh, there, from when I uh, wrecked my camera with my uh, UV laser. So uh, Captain Three One Eight. Hello, and Dana Siberia is here. Hello. Um, so, um, yeah, so anyhow, that was, uh, that was my own stupid fault, um, for playing with the laser. And of course I made a really fun discovery the other day as well. Um, I bought a, a, a number of UV lasers, the purpose of them being to, uh, cure, uh, UV solder mask, which goes hard when it gets exposed to UV light. And I've had number of UV lights in the past, you know, UV globes and stuff, and they do the job, but they do it very slowly. Uh, Morgio, hello. Um, I was just chatting to you the other day, wasn't I? Um, so anyhow, I bought this UV laser recently. It's a great big thing. It's still about the same brightness as the other one that I have, but this one actually has a really rather uh, nifty feature on it, and it, um, it actually, uh, it has a focusable beam, and you can actually focus it to such a fine point that you can burn stuff with it. So I've just been here making little tiny little burn marks everywhere. I'll do that a little bit later on. I'll show you what uh, how it works. But uh, yeah, so uh, that's uh, me having a little bit of childish fun there. So uh, I'll show you that later. Oh, thank you very much, Ron. There's a super chat. Excellent. Thank you. Hello, Trina is here. Retro Techie. Um, opening beer and uh, offering one to you as well. Well, thank you very much. It's a little bit early here for me. It's just, it's just gone midday. Um, just for, for people who do watch my streams, normally uh, I gauge most of my time based on the uh, east coast of US because uh, most of my Mac Yak friends are on the uh, on the uh, eastern time. Um, and up until last weekend, um, there's a, like a 10 hour difference. It's now a nine hour difference. So uh, this would be the same as me live streaming at 11 o'clock before daylight saving. So we're now on daylight saving. So I'm an hour closer to uh, US time. So just... Uh, uh, means that I can sleep in a little bit more, which is nice. Um, so yes, 9 p.m. is the time that I uh, I planned it for. Um, so as I say, nine hours difference between where I am. It's actually, it's the other way around. It's not actually nine hours, it's whatever. It's the other way, but anyhow. Um, fired up the mirror drive door for the first time in a while. My fave quick OS 9 box with the appropriate polycarb display. Yep, look, that's one of the things I love about the mirror drive door, the... Um, you know, the fact that they could still run OS 9 natively. I'm not sure all of them could, but certainly one of them could. Um, and that's a fast computer to be running OS 9 on, I'm telling you. Um, I had one and I gave it away. Or oh, sold it, or something like that. I, I've, I've talked about this many times before. I had no, I had quite a few in my collection and I gave a lot of them away. Had all these G3s and G4s and I don't know where I would have stored them, but I still wish I had them. It is life. Um, I am in the future. This is correct because it is Saturday here at the moment. So uh, this is my fun day. Um, my I don't have to run day. Um, no, isn't that Sunday that's meant to be done? Yeah. Um, so anyhow, today I'm going to be looking at a classic two logic board. I haven't done any classics in a really long time. I did a classic analog board last time which cleaned up and ended up looking beautiful in the end, which is fantastic. But I haven't done a classic logic board in quite a while. Um, I just haven't been getting sent them. And virtually everything I've been getting has been um, uh, SE30s and um, Color Classics and stuff like that. Uh, I've, got a few, I've got a few Mac 2s here at the moment. So it's kind of nice to, uh, to get this and, you know, have, have a bit of variety in the live stream for once. Um, what sucks about these is they have 17 surface mount electrolytic capacitors, capacitors on them that need to be changed. Now, here's a really interesting thing. The person who sent this to me, they said, oh, I've got a classic two logic board to send you. No, no worries. So they sent it to me. And that's great. With very little, very little correspondence between us. So it was pretty much just, I'm sending this to you. I gave them an address and whatnot. But I think this is one where they are having a checkerboard screen. 
And what I am finding is more often than not, these days, the checkerboard screen is happening because of the analog board, not the logic board. Now that's not to say that this logic board doesn't need recapping. It definitely does. It's something to get done as soon as possible. Uh, and obviously take any old batteries off them as well. Um, but, you know, looking at this here, I can definitely see leakage, but I would be really surprised if this is the cause for the checkerboard screen. So definitely needs doing, no doubt about it. Going to do it, that's all fine. But I'm going to be sending this back to the customer with a caveat saying, look, just letting you know, I've recapped it, tested it, working, blah, blah, blah. If you plug this in and you're still getting a checkerboard screen, you're going to need to send me the analog board. Exactly the same thing happened with another customer recently. Sent me the logic board, recapped it, sent it back, still a problem, analog board had to be sent over. Um, it does seem now that the analog boards and the classic and the classic twos are a bigger problem than the uh, than the logic boards. Um, this is also something really important, well worth noting for anyone who might be doing a little bit of collecting. Um, oh, hello, hello, my mother's watching. Thank you, thank you for tuning in, Mum. This was I um, I appreciate you joining. Uh, see how long you last for. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, this is a slightly esoteric um, in nature. This uh, this this live stream. Um, uh, it's 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 definitely uh, it, it it suits certain people. Um, so um, I just out of curiosity, how are we uh, twenty one viewers? There we go. That's not too bad for a for a, uh, for a start. Uh, oh, there's lots of people here that have turned up that I haven't said hello to. Oh, at least a couple anyway. Um, uh, Christopher Bourne, hello. And Justin Morgan, hello. And SadMac356, hello. Um, so, all right. Um, where was I? Um, I was... Um, oh, yes. Well, I just wanted to... Just a little pointer to anyone who is looking at buying a Macintosh Classic or Classic 2 on eBay or wherever the case may be. Um, because we have seen these things starting to go for obscene prices. I mean, once upon a time, certainly in Australia, the prices vary from country to country, but in Australia, once upon a time, I would, if I was going to be picking up a Classic, I would be thinking somewhere around the $50 mark. Um, 50 to 100, certainly no more than 100. So, you know, maybe 75, 80, something like that. But between 50 and $100. Um, now, of course, we're seeing them go on eBay for over five hundred dollars, and we're not talking about just listed for that price. We're talking about selling at auction for that price. So people actually bidding and getting them up to over five hundred dollars to sell. And what I would just say to anyone who is actually uh, in the market for a classic or a classic two, um, just keep in mind that they. they uh, the chances are that if it hasn't already been recapped, it's going to need the logic board and the analog board recapped. So whatever price you're thinking about spending on it, tack that cost on top of it because it's all it's almost definitely going to need doing. So, um, right. Um, I just got my classic for $40. Well done. And that's, that's how much these should be going for. I mean, crikey. You see people selling them, putting them up there with prices in the hundreds of dollars with a checkerboard screen. And as I say, when you see that, you know it's going to need both boards recap. So, anyhow. Um, yeah, it, it is tempting. I've actually got a few spares. I've got one classic and two classic twos, I think. And I've got a few spare logic boards as well. I need to take a bit of an inventory of those. I bought a bulk lot of busted classic and classic two logic boards once, and I fixed them all. And so I've now got all these spare logic boards. Uh, and every now and again, you know, when people have ones with exploded batteries, I can sort of say, well, do you want a replacement port? Um, and that was with a keyboard. Come on. That's a good deal. Uh, SE30, do you often have to recap the power supply, not just the analog board? Sometimes. I had one just, an SE30 just the other day. I recapped it the other night. Sorry, I didn't live stream it. Uh, it, was, I was, it was quite late at night, and I was just trying to get one more board done before going to bed. And recapped the logic board, took it. Um, oh, damn, that's broken. Hmm, I think it's mine. Um, uh, yeah, so I, um, I I recapped the logic board. He brought the whole computer around, plugged in the logic board, switched it on. The first telltale sign was I flicked the switch and there was a pause. 
mean, normally when you flick the switch, they're virtually instantaneous. You hear them come on, you hear the, 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 the chime. And I flicked the switch and I waited, you know, maybe one, two, three seconds, and then the chime started. And then the screen was slightly small and it was wobbling. And then as time went on, it stabilized and started growing out and then it looked okay. And I thought, oh, that's going to be a power supply. And yeah, I pulled the analog board out, pulled the power supply off. It was one of the Aztec ones. So the two power supplies that you generally get inside an SE30 will be either a Sony or an Aztec. Um, I've recapped a few of the Sony ones. I've, I've never recapped an Aztec one. That's not to say that they don't have problems but I just I've never had to do one uh, so anyhow pulled out the analog board looked at under the microscope cracked solder joints all over the board virtually every single connector you know the connector to the yoke the connector to the um, uh, the little the, the CRT board on the back the uh, connector to the power the logic board the connector to the hard drive every single one of those pins had cracked solder joints on it cleaned all the old solder off, put all new solder down, gave the board a bit of a clean, put it all back together again, and bing, it worked beautifully. No wobble anymore, no pause on startup, all working beautifully. Now, in that instance, I've basically gone back to the customer and I've said, look, you could get several years still out of this before it's going to need recapping. So I, I would say just go with it. You know, it's all working beautifully now. Uh, if you start having problems in the future, bring it back and I'll recap the power supply and the analog board. So... Yeah, they do sometimes need doing, but I would say that if you've got a problem with an SE, if you've got an SE30, uh, or an SE for that matter, my suggestion would be one of the main bits of maintenance that needs to be done is to check for cracked solder joints on the analog board. So there we go. There's a little tip for you. Um, I have an LC3 coming. Is the plus mod worth doing? 8 megahertz doesn't sound like much. You know, um, I would. doesn't sound like much, but why not? Um, those 030 chips generally don't get super hot, um, so I would be inclined to do it. I did have someone ask me to do a mod to, I think it was an LC, was it a 2 or a 3? I can't remember, I must, it was probably a 3, I can't remember, but one of the LCs, I think it's the LC3, I'm, I'm getting confused now with my LC models, but some of them, though, so the LC3 was meant to be 25 megahertz, correct? Um, and I've seen a few LC3 boards that if you, you know, plug them in and do a find out about the system, it says it's 25 megahertz, but they've got a 16 megahertz CPU on them. So there's been some conjecture about what that means. Does that mean that Apple sold it overclocked? Or does it mean that Apple got hold of a bunch of chips that were labelled as 16 megahertz that were actually 25? Did Motorola test these chips at 25 megahertz and realise that they were, you know, that the 16 megahertz can run just as happily at 25? I really don't know. But what I would suggest is if you are planning to overclock, first thing you want to do is have a look at the CPU on the board. Check and make sure it is actually a 25. Because if it's a 16, I would... I would not recommend overclocking it all the way up to 33. Uh, you know, you've, we're talking about sort of doubling the, uh, the the speed of the CPU rather than just going up by a, a smaller percentage. So just be aware, there are LC3s out there that run at 25 megahertz, but they've actually got a 16 megahertz chip on them. Have a look at your LC3 and, and, and check and see which one you have, because I've had at least two of them come by here like that. So there we are. Uh, where are we? Uh, I'm just checking here. I'm guessing. Uh, 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 uh. How do you go? Have, lined up a classic for sixty dollars. Had to get it Monday. Keyboard and mouse. That's, again, that's another good deal. We just got to remember this, don't we? When we see these things going for stupid prices on eBay, we've got to remember that deals can still be done. You can still get good value on things if you know the right people. And in particular, this is why it's good to stay within the community of the the vintage Mac users. Um, I think I mentioned in my last live stream, I picked up a bunch of computers. Now, admittedly, they, they're not this old. They're G3s and G4s and even G5s. I picked those all up for nothing, absolutely for zilch, zero. Um, came back with, I don't know, eight computers or something like that. Three laptops. Three laptops. One, two, three. Three iMacs. A G4 tower and an eMac. 
So, and I picked the whole lot up for nothing. Now I know what you're saying. They're probably worth nothing. Yeah, probably right. Um, but you know, this you can see a lot of those things on eBay going for stupid money. So, um, how do you overclock them? You overclock them by moving a resistor around on the board. That's pretty much it. Um, you have to make sure that there are particular system enablers in place, I think, from memory, but it's essentially moving a resistor from one location to another location and that overclocks them. So, um, have you ever seen a Mac 128 with a two megabyte card and SCSI interface? Not personally, but I've certainly seen pictures of them. Um, Steve, um, Mac 84, who's not here at the moment, he's got some splanning to do. Um, he, um, he has a 128 with an expansion card on it. Now, I don't think it's necessarily a two megabyte, but I'm pretty sure it does have a SCSI. Uh, and I think it allows you to take it up to six megabytes. It, does, well, it, it only goes up to four, but you can use the extra two as a RAM disk or something like that. I think that's that's what my recollection is, is telling me. But yes, I've never worked on one. I never had an, a 128 with an expansion here, but I've seen plenty of pickies of them. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, eBay was good for the Rainbow Logo Max in 2001, 2007-ish. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, can you list your UV laser in the tools list? Haven't been able to find a good strong UV laser. I certainly can, but I can just give you a little tip on this. I First of all, I haven't put a, uh, one on there yet because all of my affiliate links, because there are affiliate links in, the, in, those, in my um, description there. When you click on those links, if you do decide to buy something, I get a little, a little bit. It doesn't cost you any more. It's, um, you know, it's exactly the same price for the buyer, but it just means that if you use the link to in my description to buy, I get a little, little bit, and then I get like a, an Amazon gift voucher at the end of the, at the end of the month. I haven't been able to find a suitable laser on Amazon to share. Um, I have been able to find them on eBay though, and I do have an eBay affiliate thing, so I might see if I can um, set, set one up for there. Anyhow, if you go onto eBay. Search for 405NM, so nanometers, I assume, 405 nanometer UV laser. And the one you want, the one I can recommend the most, because I think it is the brightest and it's small and it's easy, is one that looks like this. So it doesn't have the lead. It's a battery operator one. I've made it so that it connects to a power supply. But it basically looks like that. It has a little button on the side here, runs on... Where is it? There we go. I'm in reverse here. It runs on, uh, I think it's two, either double A or triple A. I can't remember one of the two. Um, so that's about three volts worth. And I, this one is is a beauty. It's fantastic. Uh, I should probably get another one to have as a spare just in case I fry that one. But So that's what I would rec recommend. it. So if you search a 405 NM UV laser, but I will put an eBay link in there uh, in the not too distant future. So... Uh, Oh, we, look, we're getting a lot of um, um, Macintosh Classic um, bargains here, which is fantastic. Um, maybe I won't sell mine now. Um, okay, best deal I found was a TAM with a G3 Sonnet CPU for 250 Canadian dollars. Wow. Most I've ever spent on a Classic Mac, but it's my prized collection piece. Yeah, well, 250 Oh, look, we're seeing SE30s here in Australia going for over $1,000. I mean... What is going on? What was it that sold the other day for two and a half grand? Someone for, refreshed my memory. There was something ridiculous that sold for two. Oh, it was a 2GS. I think it was an Apple 2GS. Sold on Australian eBay for two and a half thousand dollars in auction. I mean, what's going on? Crazy. I mean, especially when you consider that schools were loaded up with those things. Schools used to have stacks and stacks of 2GSs. I mean, there must be, there must be old 2GSs just in people's garages all over the place. Um, Okay. Doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh yes. By the way, don't forget to smash that like button. Um, hey, what's up, guys? Right. So, um, I do have a card. I'm going to sort just because we. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Just checking, checking, checking. All right. A second outbound for three hundred dollars. Not bad for an outbound. Uh, twenty dollar Quadra nine fifty full of Avid gear. Wow, yeah, that is a pretty good deal. Um, uh, dead CPU Genesis, uh, quad CPU Genesis, awesome. 
Um, smashed. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so um, I um, was going to say, uh, yes, I, I, I've talked about this in my stream before, but I mean, the, the sort of best deal that I had recently was when I bought a whole bunch of Max that were in unknown condition and they all turned out to be pretty much everyone I think that I've tested so far has been working. I think there's only one that I haven't tested so far that, you know, everything was working and how good's that? Um, and the, the real one with that, the real um, fantastic thing I got from that was the um, um, Radius Rocket, which is now my prized possession. That ain't going nowhere. Um, okay, so I'm going to be trying a different flux today. So I've mentioned in my earlier live streams that I've had trouble getting uh, the uh, Amtec flux. I've ordered it. It was delivered and lost. And then I've, I've gone in and contacted them. They've sent new ones. It's apparently on the way, but who knows when it's going to arrive, if it's going to arrive. So I'm down to the absolute last dregs of my Amtec flux here. So I've been using an MG Chemicals flex, flux, which is quite good. It works very well as a flux. But I've found this kind of sticks on the board, even in the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, so I need to kind of clean it off a little bit before putting it in there. Otherwise, it sort of just leaves a little white residue when it comes out of the ultrasonic cleaner. So, uh, I'm, I, you know, I mean, this one's okay. Uh, this is one that I tried once before and really liked it. It's a, uh, it's a Interflux, Interflux IF8300. So I used, I had this before and I used it and I found this was a really good second one. This is a really good alternative. It's a good standby option to have. I do prefer the, um, the Amtec Flux, but, you know, one of the things about the Antec Flux, this is kind of cool. If I can just, if I can demonstrate this, we might be able to. Let's get a UV light. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but this is my uh, UV light. It's oh no! Why well, okay, came undone? Okay, retiring this one, going back to the normal one until I can find a more permanent way of attaching those wires. Okay, so in the meantime, let's go back to this one, the one that I talked about before that I really like. Bit, bit, bit. So if I just shine this laser on this, see how can you see how the the um, the uh, flux glows? It's specifically designed to do that. It's so that um, if you're washing the board, you can put it under a UV lamp and see whether it's still dirty. This one does it a little bit, but nowhere near as much as the uh, the Antec does. The Antec really glows. So uh, yeah, so that's a it's a handy thing, you know. You 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 put the board in the cleaner, you take it out, you shine a UV light on it. If you can still see a little bit of glowing there, you know there's still some flux on there. And it's going to need some more clean. Okay, uh, uh, birds, more birds. Are oh, you hearing birds? Are oh, yeah, it's springtime here, so it's always going to be bird noises. Ultrasonic cleaner that will fit a whole Apple IIe board at once. I've got a video coming out on this, by the way. Um, I don't actually know how big a 2E board is. I haven't seen one in so many years, but I'm guessing it's probably about that sort of size. So, um, that's, that's probably, I don't know. Do you reckon it'd be about this size? That's a, that's a 2V, this is a 2V... This is a mess. Uh, I think this is a 2VI or a 2VX. 2VI, I think. Wow, God, this is a mess. What is that? That's uh, 33 megahertz. That would make it a 2V. Oh, it's got the FPU on it. So that'll make it a 2VX. Yeah. Okay, so this is a 2VX board, around about the same size as CI. Do you reckon around about that size? I'm not sure. Um, it's such a long time since I've seen it. The 2E, they don't come to me because I don't think they need recapping, apart from the power supplies. Um, so um, it is a big problem with the UV, um, it's with the ultrasonic cleaners, and I, it's something that I'm going to be including in this video when I talk about this guy, um, is that when you buy those off-the-shelf solutions, those, those uh, ultrasonic cleaners that you can buy from China uh, with an unknown brand name on them and stuff like that, they... They generally, you can get them in, I think, like 10 litre, 15 litre, maybe a 20 and a 30, and you get them in like 5 litre, small sizes as well. Generally, as they get bigger, they get bigger in all three dimensions, you know, a little bit wider, a little bit taller, a little bit deeper for each one. 
Whereas, of course, if you're talking about large logic boards or large motherboards or whatever, you're wanting something that is um, bigger in two dimensions but not in the third. So even if you'd look at... So I've got a 10-litre cleaner over here that you can't see. But that's a 10-litre. Even if I get that to a 30-litre, so double the capacity of that one there, if I just buy the standard 30-litre one, I still can't fit a board like the one I just showed you in. So that's just one of the downsides. So a 2E, beer, uh, 2E board will not fit in a 22-litre machine. So what you're really left with with something like that is either send it to someone like me that has a great big cleaner like this one, or look at making your own. And my video coming out fairly soon is going to explain how to do that. So uh, there's a little bit of cost involved, but it is comparable, if not a little bit cheaper, than the cost of actually buying uh, the uh, an ultrasonic cleaner yourself. This one is... I did figure this out. I've written it down, but I can't remember what it is. I think it's 20 litres, something like that. It's not that much. It's just it's because it's, it's only shallow. The, 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 the bath only comes down to here, but it's quite wide and deep. Um, all right. Yes. And, of course, the other thing is, yeah, you can do them in two halves. If you can get one half in, you can clean them. You know, do, do, the, you know, do the one half and then flip it over and do the other half. I've done that plenty of times. We're going to do some recapping today or what? Okay. Let's have a look at the microscope and let's see what this little guy looks like up close. Uh, I'm going to get some focus here so that you guys can see what I am doing. Focus. Geez, that lens is looking a little bit smeary, isn't it? Focus. Now, I'll just make sure that I'm in focus with you as well. I keep losing the little rubber things around my eyepieces here. They keep falling off. Bouncing around the floor. One thing that's going to be very interesting with this uh, recapping today is uh, finding the right uh, capacitor. Uh, yesterday, I dropped my capacitor container and literally hundreds of capacitors just went flying. And so my otherwise well-organized little container of capacitors now has every manner of capacitor all over the place. So I have to rifle through that and find the right capacitors. I'm going to do a proper cleanup later today, but I just didn't get a chance before the live stream. So today it's going to be trying to find the right capacitor. That's what this one's going to be about. Now, we can see a little bit of an ugliness here. We've got a few little dark traces. We've got this one here. We've got this one here. We're just going to tidy these up. Well, we're just going to take the uh, UV coating off the top to make sure that we do have good copper underneath. And I'm still not quite in focus with you guys. That's a bit better. Oh, that's a better. All right. How's my uh, scalpel blade going here? It feels like it's a little dull. Might be time to change. Ch -ch change. I think it's got gunk on it. I'll see if I can get that gunk off. If not, I will just get a new scalpel. Yeah, that gunk's coming off. Okay, just going to scrape this away and make sure that these are just surface corrosion and not corroded to the core. Uh, I'm having trouble getting to this. Okay, looking good. Now, let's see if that one actually has some continuity happening. If anyone's wondering what these two chips are, these are for the serial ports. They're both the same, one there, one there. And they are for serial port one and serial port two. So that's the uh, serial port controllers there. So even if one of these wasn't working properly, you'd probably still be able to use the computer. You just wouldn't necessarily have uh, the use of the serial port. And there. Okay, well, we've still got continuity there, even though it looks like we've got a little break in it there. That break is obviously not a break. I'm going to put some new solder on this and make it look pretty. So, yeah, it really does look like a break there, doesn't it? Anyhow, we'll make it look nice. It's our mission. Um, 
Okay, this is this is uh, this is a common one. Uh, this little guy here that runs up around there. Uh, he looks pretty uh, unhealthy, doesn't he? I wonder if he's actually broken. Well, I need to get these caps off to clean those up, so that's fine. So we've got our little cluster of four here, and then we've got a sound chip right there. Hello, sound chip. Um, and let's have a look there. And as usual, capacitor's close to plastic everywhere. I mean, look at this one. Look at this little guy. What a nightmare that one's going to be. Yeah, I don't remember now. There are two revisions of the Classic 2 board. Did I mention that already? This is the revision B. You know the difference based on the ROM chips. You can actually see this one here has two ROM chips. Uh, the revision A has four ROM chips. They're, they're, uh, and they're oriented vertically rather than horizontally like this. They're smaller. There's four of them. And they're orientated vertically. So this is a revision B board. This came after the other one. So uh, there we go. Um, um uh, lunch is ready. Bye. Okay. Bye, mum. She's probably already gone there. Um, speaking of lunch, geez, I'm hungry. Um, I do enjoy this channel. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I said bye eventually. Uh, I, yeah, totally in the zone. So once I start looking at the board, I'm looking through the microscope. It's a little bit hard for me to stay on top of the chat all, chat all the time. So let's start getting some of these old caps off because that's uh, that's the aim of the game. That's what we've got to do. It's my purpose in life. We're moving old caps. I'm going to do this in a way. I'm going to try and do this in a way where I don't melt things. Strike a light. How am I going to not melt that? It's going to be a nightmare. Oh. I'll do what I can. I'm not a miracle worker, but I'll do what I can. So. These things here, which are chokes, these things with the wires sticking out on top, there's a choke. No choke, no choke, there's a choke, there's a choke. Um, they have plastic on the bottom of them. So even though they're made out of ferrite, um, which of course isn't going to melt with the hot air station, the plastic underneath it can. Now it's not the end of the world if that plastic melts, but I'd really rather not melt it if at all possible. Um, no choke, he's only choking. All right, so let's see if we can... Oh, no, that's not the right way. It's that way. Let's see if I can do this. You know what? I'm going to do this without the microscope here. Sorry. Welcome to the side view for the first time today. Oh, it just occurred to me. I've um, I think the washing machine's on at the moment, and that's on the same circuit as this. So if my stream goes dead, it's because I tripped the uh, the fuse box, the fuse breaker, and uh, and if that does happen, I'll try and come back online as quickly as possible. Uh, a lot of these things that I use do uh, use quite a bit of power, particularly the hot air station that really cranks out some some watts, some amps. All right, let's get these little guys off here. Now, once I get all of these caps off, lots of different ones, how am I going to know which of the new ones go where? Wouldn't it be good if there was a guide somewhere that showed me where these caps go? I wonder if such a thing exists. Um, incidentally, on the uh, Classic 2 boards, the most common uh, capacitor on here is a 10 microfarad 16 volt. I believe there are 10 of them on here. Whereas most of the time on the other ones, they're uh, 47 microfarad 16 volt. There is a, There are a couple of 47 microfarad 16 here, but most of them are 10 microfarad 16. Um, oh, look at that. There is. Oh, there's, there's, there's a recapping guides at Recap a Mac. How about that? What a fantastic resource. Thank you for that, Joe.
I'm not at my max, so I don't have the snippet. Oh no, what a what terrible pressure to put you under. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I tend to agree. I probably should use uh, aluminium foil. I love saying aluminium for my US friends. Um, you know, because they, uh, they are quite beneficial. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to grab some aluminium foil uh, or aluminium foil or sometimes incorrectly referred to as tin foil. Um, hasn't been made out of tin since I think like the Second World War or something like that, but that's another story. And this stuff is quite good as a heat shield and the advantage you have with this is you can mold it to different shapes. So I could say, oh, I'm just going to grab a bit here, I'm going to put that there, around there, get a bit in there and down there and up there and a little bit down there. I'll we'll just change over to the microscope view so we can all see it. Let's see if I can. Gee, the chooks are making a bit of noise at the moment. Noisy chickens. Do -do -do -do. And we go. So yeah, foil is is it can be a very good heat shield for you. And where you might want to use it is when you are uh, having trouble getting uh, you know a heat shield into a particular location because um, you know the foil has the advantage you can shape it to different shapes. I am concerned about having gaps in this at the moment. But shall we see what happens? Let's see what happens. But we'll start by getting it in focus. Off she comes. And did I melt anything? No, I didn't. Yeah, And the crowd goes well. I have melted a little bit of this bottom bit of this choke that I was referring to. You can see it there, but you know, you're barely even going to see that. Keep in mind, we're looking at a microscope. Um, just for the benefit of anyone who's not here, which of course you're not, uh, this board really stinks. So, uh, aluminum. <clears throat> All right, okay. Um, are the caps different on logic boards between 110 and 220 volt applications? No, not on the logic board, no. So all of the logic boards on these things run on the same input voltage, usually 5 and 12. These ones just run on 5 and 12 volts. I'm pretty sure there might be a 3 in there. but um, So the power supply is the one that does all of the sorting out between 110 and the 5. So these are the same. These are the same internationally. Um it's uh, captain tape it's uh, it's uh, it's it's actually um, just so you know Adam it's spelt K A P T O N captain um, so it doesn't really work as well as captain tape it it probably works better and I, I'll tell you why captain tape is very good it's a heat resistant tape and that's all fantastic but at the end of the day you adhere it to things and I'm just going to sort of demonstrate something here if I get this and I'll stick it on a piece of plastic. Let me see if I can find some plastic out of that mine melting. Melting. I'm melting. Um, uh, yeah, this can melt a little bit. I don't mind if this melts a little bit. So I'm going to put that on there like that. So we've got our heat resistant tape on there. A little bit of plastic. Yeah, it's going to be hard to film this. Maybe I'll just do it. I'll do it side view. There we go. Out you go, microscope, out of the way. There we go. Now, the tape is stuck onto the plastic here. Now, it's it does provide some uh, heat resistance, but because it's actually stuck onto it, um, the stuff underneath it can end up melting because it's not kind of, uh, it's not the tape isn't melting, but it's not blocking necessarily the heat from getting through to the other side. Um, though it is definitely helping. But you can see that I have melted it. That isn't melted there. Whereas when you use a bit of foil wrapped around like this, there is there's a gap. 
there's a layer of air in between the foil and the, uh, uh, between the foil and the plastic, and that helps work as an insulator. So, you know, the, the aluminium is helping to just, you know, um, it's helping to sort of dissipate that heat. Um, and it's, uh, and it's also, we've also got some insulation there. So let's just see which one worked out better. There we go. No signs of meltage on this one at all with the aluminium foil and definite signs of meltage there with the captain tape. Captain tape. I always say captain, it's not, it's captain. Captain tape. Okay. Um, okay. Uh... Uh, so we're going to use, I'll be sending the cutty loader above the boost the recount. <laughs> Goldman! Ah, uh, dear. Oh, Steve, thank you for joining. Yes, we, uh, we've already shamed you for not being here uh, on time. <clears throat> I'm silly, of course. But thank you very much for joining. I do appreciate it. We are currently sitting on 36 viewers, so exciting stuff. Um, all right, so uh, Steve, just a quick recap of the recap. I am recapping a um, an, a classic two. This is the Revision B board. Uh, it is the one that has two ROM chips rather than the one that has four ROM chips. Um, we're experimenting with different heat shields at the moment, trying to get these caps off without melting all the plastic that's all over the place. Uh, and so far, yeah, I've tried it with some aluminum foil, which has gone quite well. Um, and of course using my normal little heat shields as well. Thankfully here there isn't as much plastic around this uh, proximity. Got a little one microfarad 50 volt capacitor there. Oh, we're going to have a popper. Oh, holy mackerel. Look at the trace under this one. No wonder this computer doesn't work. Far out. That is so amazing, yes. Go away. Go away. I'll stay there then. Uh, it's probably been a recap LC 575 and LC 520. Everyone capping the CDU drive brought it to life. Anyway, I spent a ridiculous amount of money on Hacko Iron and Pump because of you. Okay, good on you. Well done. It's not ridiculous money if you're using it. I've got to get my bloody solder, my, my mechanical solder pump figured out. I haven't had a chance to spend much time on it yet, but I've just got to get that working because the next time someone sends me a job where I've got to remove a RAM, uh, a RAM slot or something like that, I've, you've got to have a mechanical solder cycle for that. Otherwise, you will drive yourself insane and probably damage something. Um, so what I will often use Captain Tape for uh, is I use it as an additional buffer if I'm close to a piece of plastic like this. So I've got my... Um, this is my uh, the power connector here. That's like kind of Molexy type white plastic thing, and I often wrap these in tape like this, and then use a heat shield on top of it, just giving that, that little bit extra, because uh, that white plastic does melt very easily. So let's see if we can get this little guy out. Hey there, little guy. Do 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 do. No, that way. Thankfully, these are actually coming off quite easily. Yeah, see, we're getting melted up here. Hate that. Here we go. Off she comes. I always do my best not to melt things, but I can never really make any guarantees. It's, it is, you know, it's problematic. Uh, I've got one more, ouch, ouch, that thing's still hot by the way. I've got two, two more capacitors to remove. Hot things, always hot things. <laughs> oh, Jay's in front of the right computer now. <laughs> Andrew, hello, thank you for joining. Uh, micro major repair. Did I say hello to you? Uh, if I didn't, I'm saying hello to you now. 
Um, back in black. That's Australian band. Australian. All right, come on, there we go. This is not going to be in camera, is it? Because I've got things here. Out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. Thank you. One good thing about a classic two board is it's nice and small. Get off. Thank you. Thing you. Okay, now we're on to the last capacitor. This one's sitting next to our uh, oscillator. Uh, crystal oscillator there, which is... Um, that is a... I think they call them a tuning fork oscillator. Inside them is a little tuning fork. Looks like a tuning fork. Must pull one apart one day. Would that be fun? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh, uh, come on. Thank you. All right, that's all the caps off. Now we have the fun old cleaning part. Everyone loves the cleaning part. Uh, there's going to be some cleaning here. I mean, look at that. That ain't normal. That is not normal. No, sir. I'm going to just keep that there. Oh, I'm going to focus it. I'm going to focus that because I'm going to take a still of that when I show the uh, customer. And I'll say, hey, look what your board looked like. Um, so, oh, wow. Goodness me. Look at this. Look at this. I've got to go back. Uh, here we go, here we go, here we go, boy, oh jeez, the chat's just gone crazy, it's just gone crazy, I've been doing this and I'm missing stuff, okay, uh, can I use tweezers to take off the capacitors, I wouldn't recommend it, Mm -hmm. I'm take to, to foil to, to the board. It, 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 there's absolutely no reason not to use Captain Tape to stick the foil to the board. None at all. Um, I didn't in this instance because ultimately the, the foil was holding itself in position. But yeah, you could absolutely. Um, say hello to It's fun to catch one of these live for a change. Hello, Brandon. Hello, right back at you. Um, okay. Let's see. That label is going to expire. Which label? Oh, I know. I, I know what you, you're talking about. Something else. Yep. Uh, I wish you could hear us giggling along with you. Yes, I wish I could too. Okay, just getting through. Oh my goodness me! I'm so far behind. Uh, 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 uh. What causes that, Bruce? Okay, so that blackening there has been caused by initially the capacitor leakage has caused a short and the short has made it full on short out and and generate heat and burn and stuff so when do you say it's too bad to recap uh when there's battery leakage essentially i'm quite happy no matter what the damage is from re from the capacitors it's the battery damage that does the real the real number on things and it isn't even necessarily a matter of saying, oh, that can't be fixed. It's more just about how much time it's going to take to do it. You know, I mean, you look at these boards and you think, if I'm going to invest four or five hours on repairing these things, and, you know, even then you can spend hours and hours and then you you, you, tr you try it, it doesn't work because you've missed something and you've got to then go over the board with a fine tooth comb to try and find another busted trace or something like that. You know, hours and hours and hours and hours of expended time. You you just have to look at it and think, well, is it worth it? Is it what we're looking at actually worth that money? Um, I bought another Mac today. What'd you buy, Andrew? 
Um, so, all right, let's um, let's clean this area up because this is the area that needs it the most. So let's try this new. When I say new, is in it's a flux that I've used before, but it is. Uh, I just bought it. I just bought it today. Oh, yesterday. Picked it up. So this is the other flux. This is the inter interflux flux interflux flux. Flux is extremely important with this stuff. Uh, if you're wanting to know what flux is and what it does and why the, why it's there and all that, I have a learning to solder video in the featured videos. It's a very popular one at the moment, actually. Getting lots and lots of views of that one, and it goes and explains what the uh, what flux does. And it demonstrates using doing some soldering with flux and without flux, and it really does make a difference. All right, we have got a lot of scrapey scrapey to do here, haven't we? Let's just get this uh, get these pads looking good, and then we'll uh, move on to getting these traces looking good. So uh, yeah, I'm fairly certain this one won't work. This computer in its current state, I didn't test it beforehand. I basically took the uh, owner's word for it that it doesn't work. But as I said, I thought that might have been the analog board, but I don't think there's much doubt that this logic board probably doesn't work either. Mm -mm -mm. I think there's going to need to be a little bit more scrapey scrapey. I mean, look at this. It's unbelievable. I can't believe it. Phew. It's, 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 the Amtec is king. Yeah, this flux, uh, it doesn't smell as nice as the Amtec. I mean, you're not meant to be smelling it, but, you know, you, you can't help but end up getting a bit of a smell of the stuff. So, and I've got to, oh, look at that trace. Look at him. Look at him. Can you see him moving around under the toothbrush? Whee, this is a little guy. Hello, Trace. Hello, little Tracy Wazzy. Okay. I think we can consider that one a goner. Uh, let's see what we can do cleaning up here. We've got some, some of this pad has burned away. So. My right eye. There we go. I was out of focus on one eye. So let's just snip that. I don't really see any point in keeping that one hanging out there. And let's start working out where that trace starts and finishes. So I'm going to go to there. No trace there. Yep, the old uh, shorting has done a real number on this one. Well, at least it's, uh, this one's going to be a fun one. Not just going to be one of these plain old uh, recap and away we go jobbies. This is a real dog's breakfast. I apologise if I'm not replying to any answers while I'm doing this, and there is a reason for that, and that is that I can't look at the chat and the scrape at the same time. So just uh, hang on to your questions if you have any questions for me, uh, or put them on there, and I will go back and check in a moment. And remember that if you are wanting to ask me something directly, feel free to put it in there. If I don't answer, it's not personal. I just do miss a lot of the things in the chat, especially when it starts moving quickly. And you could always put the at Brankus Creations to make it highlight for me. And of course, if you put it in a super chat, I'm definitely going to answer it. Wow, that's bad. That is so burnt. Look at that. Look at that. That's 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 bridged between there and there. I dare say, you created a short there and then just burnt out. That's a shocker. Yeah, good thanks. Bad. Bad, bad, bad. Hmm. So, um, one of the things that I generally do uh, in my videos is I am... Oh, oh there is... The bottom of the pad is hanging by a thread. Which one? Which one? This one? This guy here? Or oh, that one there. That one's, that one's definitely hanging by a thread. Yeah, we got we got work to do. We got work to do. Um, so, I um, ah, 
Darn it. That happens all the time. I knock the um, hot air station thingy off the table. It's teetering. Let me just put it back because I am going to need this thing. He probably won't need it again for this job, but never mind. Where's the handle gone? Where's the thing? Where's the thing? Ah, oh, here it is. Landed upright. Ah. Oh. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hey, hey, get out of the way. Stop it. Hey, oi. Get out of the way. There we go. Right, so everything is back to normal. Calm down, calm down. Uh, when you were wicking, it almost came off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh dear. It seems fairly stuck on now, so that's good. Um, yeah, must wait for a bit. There's lawn to mow. Spring has been very good. All things here. Yes, yes, we've got the same problem here. My mower is actually being serviced at the moment, so the lawn's looking ridiculous. Um, hoping to get it back next week. Right. So let's um, let's get some solar onto this. Let's try and tin these and figure out what we have left, what's going to work, what's not, what needs to be fixed, what can't be fixed. What... There we go. So let's get some more full looks under here. Yeah. David, hello, welcome, thank you for joining. One of the things that kind of worries me with this are these veers. I'm, I'm feeling fairly compelled to maybe clean the solar out of them if I can and run the trace through to the other side of the board. Uh, been laying on those curved blades, definitely a learning curve to them. But when you use the when you use the straight blades, totally. Um, I may have actually, um, I may have told this story before, but I'm going to tell it again anyway. Uh, I got the, I started using curved blades quite by accident. When uh, I used to work in a design studio, we used to use blades all the time because we would get, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, we would cut up well, stuff called bromide um, and do page layout. Um, this is this predates. Um, uh, doing using computers to do this stuff, so um, we uh, we used to buy these blades. And one day we did an order of blades, and the the blade the order arrived, and it was curved blades. Uh, it was by accident; someone ordered the wrong thing. They're like, "Ah, oh, this is crazy! This is so stupid." Um, but what ended up happening was we found that they were actually really, really good. For um, scraping, so there were times when we were um, when we would print out artwork onto this bromide, and you might have ended up with a, I don't know full stop that wasn't meant to be there. Rather than reprinting the whole thing because it cost a lot of money to print on that bromide, um, we would just grab uh, the blade and scrape off the um, the full stop. And um, and yeah, so and, and since then I have just. I've just totally gotten used to using curved blades. Um, but I just love using them for scraping. And because on this, I have to do a lot of scraping. So I'll see if I can actually get through with these holes. There's just three in particular that I really don't like the look of. Hey, what's going on there? What are you doing? I'll zoom in here, I think. So I have a specially fashioned needle that I have modified to be extremely thin. Is this the one? Can't remember. 
Ah, and I can go all the way through there. That's fantastic. What about here? Nope. Still solar in that one. What about this one? Still solar in that one. I think I'd rather get at these ones from the other side. So let me just see. So it's that one. Sorry, folks, for this flippity flipping. That one, and then that one. The up and up on the left. So it's that one and that one. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So I need to try and get the solder out of this one and this one. <sighs> Ryan Pierce, hello. I don't think I've said hello to you. Um, which other Aussie guy is that that says if you want to see how it works, you've got to tear it apart? Are we talking about David Jones from um, um, what's his name? EEV blog. He's a smart cookie, that guy. Trying to get this solder out. Um, when I'm trying to get solder out, for the really stubborn ones, what I generally do is add solder. I know it seems stupid, but add solder often makes removal of it easier. That does not make sense. Hey, we're through. Come on. This one's being a pest. Am I through? Am I? Am I? Anyone? Bueller? Still not through. I might be able to just do a little trick with that one. Okay. Sorry, this is a little bit dull, guys, but this is part of the really boring repairy type stuff that needs to be done. Um, so it's those two, so it's this one here that's still got me solder in it. Is it this one or this one? EEV blog, yep. Whoopsie. Oh, wrong one. Where's my fancy one? Did I put it away? Is that my fancy one? Yeah, it's my fancy one. Okay. Hole. No hole. Hole. No hole. Hole. No hole. I really would like to see this emptied out. Come on, you. Use the force. Okay, so I, hey, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yippee. 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 This is fantastic. Thank you, Joe. Do, do, do. Okay, just checking all this. Sorry, but I can't stay tonight. Good night. Sorry, I didn't uh, say goodbye to you all that time ago, Andrew. Goodbye. Thank you for joining. Uh, right, so it's time for the repairy type thing. So I might just clean this up a little bit with a... Uh, cotton bud or q-tip or cotton tip or whatever it is whatever they call them in your part of the world in this part of the world we generally call them cotton buds okay 
So, question. What do you think I should do? Should I run this just up the middle where the trace was originally? Or do you reckon I should run it around the outside? I'm going to run it where it was originally. I think it'll be better in the long run. Right. All right. Let's get some wire. Um, as I generally mention in my videos, the wire I use is um, the sort of wire that you would use for uh, an electromagnet or a motor or a transformer. Oh, you, you through? Yeah, you through? You through? Yep, cool. And uh, it is has a little enamel on it that I basically take off. So this trace here, he goes along here, along there, and then down through this hole, and then joins up with that one there. So I need to feed that through that hole there. I'm going to need my goggles for that. I can't do that with a microscope. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, how many layers are in the Mac Classic 2? I think, though I'm not certain, I think it is either four... I shouldn't say, I think. It's either four or five. I cut one of these open once, and I found four, but I think there might have been a fifth that I just couldn't see when I cut. But definitely at least four layers. Okay, look at that. It's like we're doing a little bit of sewing. Do, do, do. Um, folks who have seen my streams before know that I do like to try and make my trace repairs neat. Um, just cause. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, let's see what we can do here. Is that board clean enough for Solder Master to hold on to it? Still looks very burnt in can view. No, it's not. It is definitely not clean enough yet, but it will be. So, not wishing to cause offence to anyone, anyone watching, or anyone who might even be thinking about doing a recapping job, but if your board looks like this, may I make a recommendation that you send it to someone to do it? Um, I'm not, as I say, I'm not trying to insult anyone or suggest that, you know, you, you can't do it or anything like that, but this is the sort of one where I, I do think you're better off Sending it to someone. That's joined, isn't it? Let me just check. Um, I need my beepy to beep, mate. Beep machine. Which you can't hear. One day I'm going to try and rig something up so that the beep goes through the microphone. Yeah, they are joined together. So to give this a little bit of extra strength, I'm just going to bend this down. And join it to the other side of this. Uh, what is that? That's a capacitor. There's a little. Um, what do they call them? Carbon? Layer, multi layered carbon? Something like that. Rain escapes me today. Doesn't have to turn up every day, does it? Oh, thank you, Jay. Once this is done, it'll be the save of the month. I've actually got a, uh, a board here that I need to be working on. I know it's going to take me ages, and so it hasn't been done because I don't have ages of time at the moment. Well, I've got a 2FX board that I need to save. If I do save that, that one will be the save of that month. Just put a little... There we go. Nice little blob there. All right, so that's... Trace repair number one. Off she comes. There we go. Okay, so 
Happy with that. Happy with that. Everyone else happy with that? If you have any concerns, I would like you to voice them now, please. This one I'm probably going to run all the way down there. So this one's going to be big one. Two FX, yeah, everyone loves the two FX, isn't it funny? Such nostalgia are linked with the two FX. I mean, I can understand that those they go for quite a lot of money. Um, I don't. I I've pretty much given up the idea that I will ever own a two FX, and you never know. I might. Hey, hey, you're not all the way through, are you? Dag Nabbit. Oh, fudge sickle. You're not on the other side of that, are you? You are. You're underneath the bloody IC, so I'm not going all the way through there on that one. No. No. -uh. I mean, no. I just can't. So let's just poke it in there and do a bit of that. Ooh. have concerns yeah I mean because I did work with a 2FX once the, the when I worked in a studio there was one 2FX there I mean and that would have just been probably given to a recycler or someone maybe took it home I don't know but yeah god if I just could have kept all of those computers that I used to work with it's a little bit like all those people that, you know, sort of like, oh, I wish I'd kept my uh, Luke Skywalker, you know, toy in its packaging. But why would you? There's no way you could have known that those, those things ended up becoming worth a huge amount of money. You can get your little Darth Vader toy that makes the, the, uh, um, the lightsaber comes out of his arm or something like that. Just, there was no way that we, you know, could have known at the time that those things were going to become these incredibly valuable collector's pieces. This sucks. Just saying, this sucks. Uh, I bit my Wookiee. <laughs> the thing that made me laugh is when some of those figurines started being worth a lot of money, there were people going, oh, let's check in the cupboard, we've got these. And they pull out these mangled toys and it's like, yeah, no, they're, they're worth about 50 cents, I'm afraid. You want that to be worth a lot of money, it's got to still be in the packet. It's like, yeah, we've all got toys that have been played with. It's the ones that haven't been played with that are worth a lot of money. One of my eyes is out of focus. There we go, that's better. All right. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to bend this like this so that we're actually soldered onto the pin of this. Like that. And we'll get some flux on here. You like our flux? That's about a half a Rossman I'll just put on there. Sorry about this, guys. This is probably a little bit on the dull side. I really did not expect that I would be having to do these sorts of repairs on this job. Uh, let's just see what this looks like. 
Yeah. Giving me a good reason to come to the uh, to the US there, Dana. I had a dream I was in the US the other day. Weird. There we go. Well, we're all joined up to where we're supposed to be joined to. So now we just need to do some cleaning and some UV masking. Oh my god, Steve Jobs. <laughs> Uh, this one doesn't look too crash hot either, does it? Hmm. He <laughs> dropped caramel on the board. So, um, um, yes, this is. Um, does everyone remember? Look, I'm sure everyone has seen this at some stage, where someone has sold a, um, um, like, or have, have had like a Mac Plus on um, a Mac Plus or a 128K or five tool, probably more than Mac Plus than anything. They put a Mac Plus up on eBay and made some sort of huge big deal feature about the signatures inside the case. That always cracks me up. I always get a giggle out of that. So we go, oh look, rare signatures inside the case. Rare. Mate, they all had it. I know what I've got. Don't try and lowball me. Come out, damn soldier. <laughs> That's a great idea, uh, Jay. I like the idea. Everyone just jump on and say what country they're from. Uh, in case people haven't been able to guess so far or didn't know, I am from Australia. Germany, USA, the big apple. Uh, currently fiddling with my SE30 I just got the other day in Midwest USA. I'm having too much fun. Awesome. Canada. Done, mostly. Back. <laughs> How was it? It's not. It, I don't know what the weather's like there. It's not too warm here at the moment. So uh, it's a beautiful day at the moment. I'm not saying I'd want to be out there mowing the lawns, but, you know. I want to apologise to everyone here who feels that they haven't had a chance to see little um, Bernie in a while. Anyone who's a new viewer might not know this, but uh, I have chickens. I have six chickens. And um, I used to regularly get visits from one of those chickens during my live streams. But she's sort of adapting to the, to the flock now, and uh, she generally hangs out with... Um, with the other chickens rather than coming in and bothering me. She likes to come in here late in the day because she would much rather sleep in this shed than she would in her coop because all of the other chickens are mean to her because chickens are a-holes, just in case you didn't know that. They're really awful to each other.
flux. No doubt the flux is important in this stuff, eh? Um, so, I'd love to actually get the other chicken on the live stream sometime, the blind one, but I would need to go and get her. And I know that could turn out to be an absolute schmozzle. And we don't want schmozzles, do we? No. Okay. So, we're getting there. Um, I think that's probably it from the trace repair part of this. So now we've just got to, we've got to get a bit of solder onto these. Uh, oh, we've got to get a bit of focus. There we go. Bit of solder onto these uh, exposed traces. So down last longer. Um, 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 there we go. Yeah, um, you're quite right, Steve. These um, these pads are really uh, floaty. I have to be super careful here, otherwise I'm going to lift them off. Now, of course, if you do accidentally remove a pad, what are you going to do about it? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to jump onto my uh, featured videos, and you're going to see a video there called Repairing Damaged Pads. Now... I've had a couple of people have a bit of a whinge about me calling it repairing damage pads because I'm not actually repairing damage pads. I'm repairing a computer with damage pads. The pads themselves I'm not repairing. The pads I'm replacing. It's amazing what people get upset about, but yeah, people do get upset about that sort of thing. I cannot believe you said repairing damage pads when you're clearly not repairing damage pads. All I could see you were doing was doing trace repairs. I didn't see you repairing damaged pads at all. You should call it repairing damaged pads. Um, yeah, looking good. good. It, it, it looks really awful at the moment because it's covered in scunge, but um, we, will, uh, we will make it look better. We have the technology. I mean, probably what I should do with this is ultrasonically clean it and then put the um, UV mask on but I would then have to ultrasonically clean it and then put the caps on and I want to put the caps on before I ultrasonically clean it because I just want to that's why right Okay. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, so I, I, I see I see talk about um uh cats with one eye is that was that possibly a reference to um the fact that my chicken is blind? Um was that following up the fact that I was mentioning that I had a blind chicken? Because if anyone's curious about how that chicken gets along being blind, it actually gets along incredibly well. It's the fattest chicken we've got. So it has no trouble getting food, that's for sure. It has to be very trusting. It has no choice. I mean, it wouldn't obviously survive in the wild, but it trusts me. And uh, so, you know. That one looks to look pretty crap too, doesn't it? I reckon that's a break there. I don't think it is, but let's just scrape anyway. Yeah, copper there. God, this one's bad. This is this is bad. Probably bad. Um. I don't like to crash on either. Yeah, does that go through? No, it doesn't. Of course it doesn't. There'd be too much to expect. I just, I don't like... You can see how the part of this little pad on the top of the veer... So you can see the edge of the veer there. So the veer is the little tube of copper. 
and you can see the edge of that little tube of copper there on the bottom right and then the pad which should be all the way around it has come away down the bottom right hand corner now i feel quite confident that that one is still making contact but i think i would just feel a little bit better if i had uh some um had a little bit of, bit of trace there Sorry guys, this is, I, I realise that this isn't recapping. Uh, I didn't realise this one was going to be this difficult. I'm going to have to uh, charge it a little bit more for this one too, so sorry Mr. Person. Um, I probably should have told him, shouldn't I? That's what happens when you do things on live stream. But you just, uh, you just get carried away. Right, let's start sucking some solder away. Jay's off to stretch. It's good watching. Well, I'm pleased to hear. Um... So this one and this one I don't mind the look of, but this one here I really don't like. So, are we through? Are we through? We're not through. Piffle. Okay, so I'm going to have to do the, the old finding it on the other side trick. Which is not a trick at all. Just a pain. Uh, I try and look for shapes with the Vs that I can match on the other side. So there's, it went, 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 oh, hang on, there's another one up there, okay, so. Consignment. Oh, don't tell me you're under a chip as well. You are. You are under a chip, you stupid. You stupidy stupid. So, I don't want to take that chip off, so I guess I, I don't know. What do I do? What do I do? Maybe I do take the chip off. Will I feel better about myself if I take the chip off? I know that if I don't take the chip off and fix this up, I know that Jay's going to give me grief about it. Okay, now I will run that wire through. It explains why the wire wouldn't go through when I poked it. Because it looked like it was free of solder, but I still couldn't get it to go through. And I couldn't get it to go through because it was hitting a chip on the other side. That's going through. Do, 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 do. Got to clean this up. Uh, 
Uh, oh, okay, here we go. I'm going to say, because I clicked my whole time on YouTube, it works fine. Click in here. Okay. Yeah, so, um, the, uh, the time that I bought the Quick, it really was the best option available of a particular price range, though I have seen better ones, well, not better ones, I've seen ones that are comparable that are cheaper. Now, having said that, that might be depending on where you are in the world out here. Probably one of the biggest stings is the cost of delivery. So uh, I had a look at a cheaper one, and, and when I... Um, when I figured out the uh, delivery charge and everything like that, it was um, really not that much cheaper than the Quick. Um, I've been very happy with the Quick, I have to say. I really don't have anything bad to say about it at all. Um, but I do know, look, having said that, I, I mean, I used a different one before. I mean, I used a very cheap one before. Uh, it, was, it was kind of rubbishy. Um, and uh, it was, um, it did the job. This one does the job better, but it, the other one did do the job. So what I would generally say to someone, if you are planning to remove an IC, like I just did there with lots and lots of pins, uh, having a cheap um, hot air station is better than having no hot air station at all. There's no doubt about that. Um, right. Looking good, looking good. Let's put that chip back on, shall we? So that goes there. I'm going to just bend this pin up a little bit. Seeing as it's now got a wire under it. Really should be doing that with a microscope. There we go, that's enough. Uh, right. That's not a good position. Sorry, I'm being a little bit quiet. I'm concentrating. How dare I? Being very antisocial, aren't I? Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I've seen a number of your videos. Do you are replacing those SMD electrolytic caps with tantalum? Yes, I am. A lot of talk around the decision being a good thing or bad thing. Wanted to hear your thoughts on this. Well, one of the things I generally say about the tantalum caps, well, here's a really important thing about tantalum caps. Tantalum caps are really reliable. And if you don't believe me, have a look at a Quadra 900 or a Quadra 700. Uh, Apple made the decision on those computers not to use surface mount electrolytic caps. They used tantalum. And guess what? Those old Quadra 700s and 900s are still going strong with their original tantalums. Now, there's always some smart attic out there that's saying, oh, but, you know, when a tantalum fails, it, uh, it fails and it's short and it just blows up and it cracks and it wrecks your computer. And, you know what? Uh, sure. Um, but, you know, there are so many, uh, I mean, these things are these backs have already got tantalums all over them. One of the reasons why they often went with surface mount electrolytic caps is because they're cheaper than tantalum cap capacitors. The reason they're cheaper is because tantalum is a very precious metal. Tantalum is expensive. Um, so you know, there's one. There's a tantalum cap right there. Has it failed? Nah. -uh. So I really don't have an issue with replacing surface mount electrolytics with tantalums, as I say, because they are very very reliable. 
Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's, it is something that gets a lot of discussion, probably more than it needs. Um, because people do talk about it all the time. It's one of the things they say on the Facebook forums. There's always someone out there always going, oh, no, you don't want to use tantalum. Now, if you really want to go out there and put yourself in a good position for the future and, um, and you know, sort of use the best dis -dis -dis technology out there, go and stick some polymer capacitors on there. Polymers uh, look like an electrolytic, except they use a powder instead of uh, a liquid so they don't leak they are more expensive uh, but they are probably the way to go and a lot of new um, devices are using them you can generally tell they're polymer because not always but a lot of the time they're colored um, the little stripe on them instead of being black is like bright blue or pink or something like that so um, yeah, so anyhow, at the end of the day, the moral to the story is that I really have no issue with replacing these with tantalum capacitors simply based on their, um, you know, their reliability. They're a very, very reliable type of capacitor as long as you don't, you know, sort of use them outside of their spec, which of course you shouldn't do with any capacitor. So that's that's my general feeling on it. Um, I, I've mentioned that a few times in my live streams. I mean, if someone sort of, turns around and says, oh, you know, I'd never use tantalums. Or if someone sends me a board and says, I don't want to use tantalums, it's like, no worries, it's fine. Um, but most of the ones I recap, I recap with tantalums and, you know, away they go. Happy as. Is that a Rev E or a Rev A or a Rev B? Can you tell them apart? So, see if you guess right. No cheating. I really I haven't done anything about that one, am I? That's shocking. Did I just forget about that one or what? terrible okay let's fix that one as well i promise this will be the last one i can't make that promise there's no way i can make that promise now does this go through to the other side i am hooping against hoop that uh these particular holes just go through to the other side and not to layers in the middle because this one here looks like the via is completely gone uh, let's just see where this goes. That one's going to. So this will then end up being on the left hand side and above it. Yeah. That one there? Does that seem right? Does that seem right? Um, is it that one there? I don't know. I'm going to have to get a pin. I've got my little pin here. That's what I do to orient, you know, get my, sort of orient myself, make sure I'm in the right spot. So that, oh, we, we poked for, it had a little bit of gunge in it. Um, probably more of a scunge actually, but I'm going to poke this through. Is this, where does this go? This goes down underneath, so this one goes. Yeah. Just need a little bit of something to attach the trace to. And we'll put that through. And I'm pretty sure this is the right one. Uh, keep in mind, uh, I do actually have schematics for this if I end up in a situation where I have to start figuring where traces are going other than just what I see. This is definitely one of the worst uh, classic twos I've ever seen, other than a battery damage one, of course. 
It is a Rev B, that is correct, it is a Rev B. Uh, the way we tell it's a Rev B is it's got two ROM chips. One, two. The Rev A has four ROM chips. The Rev A also has less capacitors. Nothing good. Right, and then we'll just tack this one down on this side as well. We're doing a good thing. We're doing a good thing here. We're saving a two C, a classic two C, a classic two. A good deed for the day. So, interesting thing about the classic two. Um, people who may not necessarily know the history of this computer. Uh, it was, I think at the time it was sort of released as if it was meant to be a replacement for the SE30 compact Mac with a 68030 because the classic that came out, the first one, was still only a 68000 chip. So they brought this one out, you know, I think meaning to be like, you know, a replacement for the SE30, but of course it wasn't a very good replacement for an SE30 because it wasn't as fast and the reason was uh, uh, the speed of the bus, I think, was one of the, the factors. Um, the other was... No, that's just black gunk on there. Fine. Uh, the other was that it was only expandable up to 30? 30, 30-something 30 RAM? I can't, I, I can't remember. The, there was a limit to how much RAM you can install. 36 megs or something like that. I can't remember. 32, sorry. Two 16s in there or something like that. I only had two RAM slots. So I think you could put two 16s in there, I think. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the Classic 2 was kind of really not a replacement to a, an SE30 because it wasn't as good. I would much rather own an SE30 than a Classic 2, that's for sure. And, of course, the other thing the SE30 had that the Classic 2 didn't have was an expansion port. This guy here had this, which is a cache slot. No, ROM FPU expansion slot. There you go, ROM FPU expansion slot. That was it there. No one ever made, Apple never made something to go in that slot. They put this slot on it and they never made anything to go into it. Silly old Apple. This sorcerer's ways. This is quite the job, this one, isn't it? Quite the job. And it's one thing to have to do 17 capacitors, but it's another to have to spend all this time repairing. Okay, um, top limit is 10. Is it 10 for the Classic 2? Jeez. Yeah, that, that rings a bell now. It was like the LC at the time, with 12 or whatever. Isn't that stupid? Stupid. To bring it out with such a, a low limit. Sorry, not sorry. You can buy a few boards for that slot. Yes, you can, but they weren't made by Apple. They were third party ones. Having said that, I have never, ever seen one. Now, I, I'm not saying that that means they don't exist. I'm not like that. But I've never seen one. getting as much flux as I can off because I've got to put UV solder mask down on this and I need to put it down onto the surface of the board while on the flux. 
I've got some flux cleaner in a little bottle here. I can always spray a bit of that on. Spray, spray. I am missing some of these things in the chat here, so I do apologize. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Terrible machine, really. And Apple admitted that they could have made the display 256 grays instead of one bit black and white. The cost wasn't anything real, they just didn't. Yeah. Was the Classic 2 the first to be less than 1K? It's probably more likely to have been the Classic, I would have thought. Because the Classic 2 was meant to be the kind of scaled up one. But I could be completely wrong. And of course, keep in mind that I've always got the Australian price comparison, not the US. And often when they're saying, oh, this is the first, you know, sub thousand dollar computer or something like that, it would have still been over a thousand dollars here. All right, let's have a look at this and see if we are ready for some Yurve Solomask. And then we can use my laser. Pew, pew, pew. That looks all right. Let me just uh, a little bit more here. Quick dry. Okay. Great. That looks good. I like it. I like it a lot. Classic 2 software, 1250, introduced in 1900 years. The Classic original S yes, was 999 if it was ordered without the hard drive. Whoa. And of course, I assume without that RAM upgrade as well. Because the, uh, the Classic has one megabyte on board. And then it has uh, a little expansion card that has another megabyte on it. And then you can add another two megabytes onto that board. So the Classic had that four megabyte RAM ceiling. I remember talking to someone on one of the Facebook groups who was getting really angry about the fact that he couldn't put any more RAM in his LC2. Or was it a Color Classic? I can't remember which one. One of those ones that had like the 10 megabyte limit on it. So there were a few that had that 10 megabyte cap. And I remember this guy sort of, you know, just, you know, what, what, why... I want to put more in. Why? Why can't I put more in? And it's like, yeah, Apple made it that way. Well, can I? Can I change it? Why can't I change it? Apple painting. We're gonna put ourselves a little tree in here. Still gunk up there, isn't there? We have to clean that. People. Sorry to anyone who might be in the middle of chatting to me at the moment, I'm not reading it. As you can see, I'm doing a little bit of that whole concentration thing. Eh, glasses, come on. 
Now I did bring my classic two down here, my one, one of my ones, to test this with once I finish recapping it, because I do believe that once I get this bit done, it should actually start moving a little bit quicker. Um, this is, you know, I went to the hardest part first. This is the, I've, I've always been a hardest part first person. Uh, I remember when I worked in this company and I would have a job where the, I knew there was one part that was going to take me ages and the rest were going to be easier. I would always start on the most difficult part first. And my boss used to always have a problem. It's like, you know, just get yourself some quick wins first and then go on to the difficult ones. So, you know, I, it's just the, the nature of the way that I work. I've just always done the hard bits first. Um, but I can totally understand doing all the easy ones first. So then you feel like you've done most of the job. Well, you know, you feel like you've made a lot of, a lot of progress. Um, okay. Right. Let's uh, hit that with a little bit of UV light to get it doing its uh, masking thing. Uh, EY05. Hello there. Reminds me of a shirt I made about 16 bit buses. Yes, Mac 84, I know that one. Um, okay, so uh, I got a 2SI with a bad battery leak damage after cleaning the board and noticed the VLSI chip had lost a few legs of corrosion. Is there a way to repair those or uh, only with a new chip? How many legs are we talking about? Because yes, you can. There are things you can do with the legs, but what? how many are we talking about here? Are we talking about two or three or are we talking about like a dozen? Um, if it's like a dozen, I would say it's just going to be easier to get a new chip. Um, so, uh, this is me, uh, UV. Uh, I thought that 50 pin expansion slot could have been used to install a 682 FPU process and to be used with the map. So, yeah, well, yeah, it can. It actually says ROM FT FPU expansion slot. And I'm guessing that Apple had in mind releasing that, but they never did. Um, I don't think the Classic 2 was uh, that much of a success for them. I could be wrong. Classic was a huge success. Got those in schools everywhere, but I'm not sure about the Classic 2. Because as I say, they never released a card from there. But yes, it is described on the board. It's stenciled on here. ROM slash FPU expansion slot. Um... One of the things I love about the Classic, and I'm sure you guys know about it because you're all Mac vintage Mac persons, um, I love the fact that you can boot the Classic into its ROM. How cool is that? Um, it'd be cooler if it had SCSI probe loaded on that ROM, um, that ROM, uh, you know, uh, system. But you know, figures can't be choosers. Um, At least eight to ten legs. Yeah, look, I would probably be inclined to replace the chip if I was you. Um, let's have a look at my donor boards. I might even have one that I can send you. Ah, excuse me, back in a second. I've got my microphone here, haven't I? Testing, testing, one, two, three. So you should still be able to hear me as I look through my donor boards. Ah, whoop. Is that? Yeah. That's. Uh, oh god, yeah, no, you don't want this one. Um, is that one there as well? Oh, there's, there's another one. Ugh. So, just in case you thought your board looked bad. Uh, that one. I've raided it a little bit, as you can see, taking a few bits and pieces off it here and there. There's a RAM slot there, a chip here and there. So you would be talking about... You're talking about this chip here. Would that be correct? Would that be my... Would that be, be right, that one right there? There... Horrible play for the battery, isn't it? So, um, yeah, because mine's intact. I can probably send that to you if you want. Uh, uh. Won't be the first chip I've sent over the ocean. Uh. 
Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Okay. Well, uh, uh, we're doing it. Bevel tip, do you have any ideas on a good iron around 50 to 75 US dollars supports bevel tips? Um, so, 50 to, I'm not sure about this 50 to 75 US dollars, but one of the things I can recommend, um, I've put, oh, there is a recommendation, in the description you'll find a recommendation for a low cost soldering iron, and I can't remember how much it costs, but have a look at it because um, it does use bevel tips. It doesn't just use bevel tips, it uses these sort, which are T12 tips. And these are really, really good. They're very good at getting heat where you want them. So I highly recommend something that uses a T12 tip. Another inexpensive option, again, I don't know exactly how much they cost in US dollars, is one of these. It's a uh, TS, TS100. It doesn't look like much, but basically what you do is you just get a 12-volt power supply, connect it there just using a normal barrel connector. Um, you need to have a fairly good, you know, high power 12 volt uh, power supply. You don't want just like a, a ratty little one. And these actually are quite a good soldering iron. And this one has a bevel tip. This one here actually has a bevel tip on it. Um, and these are actually like an open firmware type thing. So uh, you can actually download different versions of like operating systems for it. So this one here, you can actually set this up. I've got this with a, a slightly custom version of the software that allows you to get a slightly higher peak to operating temperature and it's got different behavior when it because this can go to sleep when it's not being used so you can if it's just been resting in the same position it'll just automatically go to sleep and that's all built into the system so these aren't a bad one here but again i'm not sure what a ts100 costs but you might be able to find that and then you just you just have to source a, a decent power supply for it so um but there is, you will find a low cost alternative um, soldering iron in my um, in the description there, but I can't remember how much it costs. <clears throat> you can see this stuff, no, you can't see anything because I'm not on the microscope yet. You can see this stuff going to a matte finish rather than being that sh gloss that it was before. Um, I if I can get this thing here working. I can have two lasers. What's better than one laser? Two lasers. Win it. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, I've got to find some way of pulling this apart properly so I can get this wide in. Um, two videos and streams have saved a bunch of my old Macs. That's awesome to hear. Not sure how to pronounce your name. F E. Well, I thank you very much for saying that. Come off. Strip you thing you. Yeah, I, I, I use a bevel tip for just about everything. Just about everything. I do sometimes use a uh, bent conical tip, um, very specific tasks, and I sometimes use one of those little wedgie type chips, I can't remember what they're called, there's a name for them, I just can't remember what it is. Alright, let's see if we can get our second laser working as well, so we can go double laser, pew pew, pew pew, pew pew. We got a double laser. Pew. Whoops, you see it's starting to burn there. So this one I can focus into a much finer point. I'll show you. I've got to show you, seeing as we're here. I know the picture's not the best and it's out of focus, but. There we go.
Isn't that cool? It'll take a while to cover this in. <laughs> okay. So now look, I'm ambi um, laserous. And I know what you're thinking. Bruce, why? Why? Just why? Right, so I want to just try and get some of this flux cleaned away from here. You can see it sort of leaking out there. Keeps coming out of the hole. I don't have to do. I don't have to do. Oh, look at it. Yep, that flux all right. It's seeping out through that hole. There's flux on the other side of it, I suppose. It was just coming up that hole when I hit it with heat. There is a way around that. I can seal that hole up with solar. It may be what I end up doing. If this comes out again, uh, <laughs> it just fills up the moment I take the heat away. I don't, there we go. I don't. Okay, I'm going to seal the hole up with solder and then that will solve that issue. Better way to clean the legs of a chip uh, with corrosion damage other than IPA and a toothbrush. I have formed 200 board with corrosion that refused to come off. Um, um, yeah, it's a difficult one, that one. I mean, a lot of the time with corrosion, I, um, I end up having to scrape it off sometimes, depending on how bad it is. Um, I've got the, obviously the ultrasonic cleaner that I tend to use. Um, but some of that really baked on corrosion. Um, I've heard a lot of people talk about vinegar, but that would worry me. I worry about the the effects of vinegar on these things, but if, apparently vinegar is really good getting corrosion off. So, you know, maybe you want to try that, but you just got to make sure that if you do use vinegar, you don't let it stay on there for long and you wash it completely off. Just wash it with some distilled water or something and make sure you get every single last trace of that off. Yay! Um, 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 there it is. This repair has just been going on for such a long time, isn't it? Shouldn't have done all that yakking at the beginning, all that checking. Speaking of yakking, got anyone here who watches Mac Yak? I, know, I certainly know some of you. If you're someone saying, hey, I don't know what Mac Yak is. Well, Mac Yak is a YouTube channel. And we get together once a week and we talk about Mac stuff. And we do it in a very light-hearted fashion. We try and make each other laugh in the process. We try and make it reasonably entertaining for other people to watch. I can't make any real promises with that. I suspect we probably think we're a lot funnier than we are.
So careful of that one a bit. So we're getting this all prepped for putting uh, putting some new caps on here. It looks like an absolute dog's breakfast, but I do believe we've managed to restore continuity to all these. Um, provided nothing got fried, I think we'll be okay. But given how bad this is, I'm, I'm definitely emotionally preparing myself for a, uh, a non-starter. With this UV solder mask, if you need a lot of it, it makes a lot of sense to do it in more than one layer. Because it's quite difficult to get the mask to dry all the way through if you paint it on too thick. So, uh, you know, you can paint it on in, uh, in layers. Right, let's continue, shall we? Boy, oh boy, oh boy, how long did that take? Now, let's continue on with the cleaning. Let's clean up the rest of these pads. Normal uh, process that I use here. I use a little bit of flux. Yep. Then I use a little bit of solder. And I use a little bit of heat and a little bit of gentle rubbing. And I want to make all of these pads so that they uh, hold solder across the whole pad, not just like a little blob of solder and then black gunk. I want to make it so that the pad can hold solder across the whole thing. Um, and then I know it's properly clean and then that's going to make sure I get really good adhesion when I put that new pad, uh, new component onto the pads. There we go. The, as you can tell from as I move this around, you see how easily um, some of the UV mask comes off the copper. The UV mask on these is really, really weak. Okay, we've got another four here. Let's do hit four at the same time. Once again, I am not using my lovely Amtec Flux. I am using Interflux. It was an IF8300, which I found to be a good standby option if I can't get hold of the Amtec. And one of the nice things about this Flux is I can buy it from a place that is literally 10 minutes drive away from here. So I can order it online and then I just specify it to be pick up. And then they contact me and say, your order is ready to be picked up. And then I drive over there and grab it. Save me a little bit on delivery charges. And it also saves me a bit of time. That's the place where I also buy my um, isopropyl alcohol. I buy it in big five litre tubs at a time. I do go through quite a lot of isopropyl alcohol. It's just the nature of doing this sort of work. I'll tell you what I also go through a lot of. Wick. Solder wick. Heaps of it. Hoips and hoips. Look at those shiny pads. All ready for new components. Look at this dull black trace. All ready for scraping. Definitely feel like I'm making some progress now. I'll tell you one thing about this flux is it is sticky as anything and it stinks. So there we go. But it does flux well. It's funny, isn't it, when we talk about flux and capacitors, and then of course we have that movie with the flux capacitor. <laughs> uh, wicked good. Uh, do, 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 do. Looking good. This is definitely shining up well. I mean, you can see how quick this would have been if all of the pads had been like this, rather than those ones that the, the capacitors that I've been working on before, where it was an absolute corrosion train wreck. Oh, jeez. Something just landed on the roof of the shed. 
some kind of bird. Lousy stinking bird. That quote's from a movie. I wonder if anyone knows what movie that quote's from. He was up on the roof with the boats. Filthy, stinking boats. It's a very obscure one. If you get it, I'd be amazed. I can give you a clue. The apocalypse. <laughs> As someone who uh, has watched my streams before with the pigs. We're getting a lot of bats here at the moment. We get the little flying fox bats eating the figs at night time. Um, it's that time of year. so And they're so noisy. They squabble with each other and stuff like that. They're gorgeous though. Cute little thing. They poo everywhere though. Okay, so I'll give you a clue about the movie, about the filthy stinking boids. It's a Mel Brooks film. Anyone else think that trace looks busted? No, it wasn't High Anxiety. That's a great film, though. Geez, that, that film is funny. Cloris Leachman in that movie is just hilarious. Playing the part of Nurse Diesel. The rate of recovery is much higher in the classroom than it is in real life. <laughs> the producers well done steve that is the movie it is the producers i really think that's broken i'm gonna get the old beepy beep machine on it but I think it's broken. <laughs> Michael Mullet knows high anxiety. You don't get a fruit cup. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was so funny. What was this? What was that guy's name? That actor. Um, oh, I can just picture his face, but I can't remember his name. Um, okay, let's get the beepy beep meat machine. Whenever you're using these, always tap the pins together first because I've been in a situation where it's powers, it's automatically powered off. You know, the battery's you know it's done its auto power off thing, and I'm there going, "Oh, we're gonna break!" And then it's like, "Oh yeah, the thing's not switched on." Yep, we got ourselves a break in continuity right there. Right there. Um, I probably won't repair that now. What I'll be inclined to do is put the capacitor down and then run a wire. I might start running the wire now. Where am I going to run it from? Do I go all the way back up to the top? Do I, do I, do I? Is that what I do? This one here, this little break there, this is not the first board I've had that's had that on there. I had one board, as I mentioned before, that I got a, a bulk lot of boards, and one of the boards that didn't work, it didn't work because of that. It worked of that one thing there, that break, stopped the board from working. Okay. We 
got here is a failure to continuity. Okay, just gonna suck some of that uh, out of there. Suck, suck, suck. You're so close. You're nearly out. You're nearly out. Come on. Come on. You want to come out? Stop it. Stop being stupid. I could do the cheaty method. I'll show you the cheaty method when I can't be bothered just spending too much time getting the solar out of the hole. This is the cheaty method that I use. Get the uh, little wire. I melt it and I push it through while it's melted. Did it work? Did it work? You'll know by looking at the other side, won't you? Real tree. Can I see that wire sticking up anywhere? Should be around here somewhere. I should be able to tell because the, the little blob... There it is. Right there. You can't see. Yes, you can. There it is. Right in the middle. Can we pull that through? Yay! <clears throat> what a happy, happy day. <laughs> what about that? Did anyone see that thing on Facebook just recently of that guy with that? I think it was a Mac Classic who wanted 20 bucks for a, a smashed up Mac Classic. He put it on one of the, I think, Australian. No, he put it on one of the international groups. He was from Sydney. And he wanted 20 bucks for a Classic that was an absolute train wreck. The thing had been dropped. So the case was cracked on the side. Um, it had a, you could tell it had a busted CRT because it had a dark spot in the middle. So when you've got a dark spot in the middle of the CRT, you know that the, the, um, the vacuum has been compromised. So that just then becomes a worthless piece of glass. Uh, now I, the photo didn't have, I don't think the photo had an analog board, but I think he was actually selling it with the analog board, but there was no logic board with it. And he was wanting $20 for it. And, you know, I mean, I just, like, you know, I don't want to discourage you from selling stuff, but, mate, there is not $20 value there. Some people just do get a little bit deluded sometimes, don't they? Yeah, uh, yeah, why do people video smashing those things? I don't know. I guess they just don't see that there's any value in them, I guess. If you don't think there's any value in it, then yeah, sure. I'm going to smash it. Um, 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 um. Oh, there it is, right in front of me. Just gonna trim that down a little bit. Right, so we are. There's a lot of bird noise out here today, isn't there? Just gotta make sure I'm in focus. Cleaning, cleaning. Just feel like I've been working on this board forever.
probably going to need to get a bit of UV mask on some of these too. Uh, we've got one cheeky little fella here. And I may as well put some flux on this other cheeky little fella while I'm in the same vicinity. Yeah, yeah, they do, don't they? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, the, sorry, I'm, I'm responding to uh, sort of Dana's comment here about uh, they look like they've got like moss or algae growing on them. But uh, yeah, it's uh, just a little bit of that corrosion. That should come off in the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm, I'm not really going to bother about doing anything more with that. Um, the thing is that these oscillators um, are generally, these are the ones that keep their, their for the real-time clock. Uh, so whatever they are, 34, I can't remember the exact, they're a very common uh, oscillation speed, you know, um, frequency. Uh, it's 30 something, 37, I can't remember, 30, yeah, someone will know. And uh, and the thing that often happens with oscillators is that they are, they're near the real-time clock, and the real-time clock is near the battery. So there's often this situation where... Um, um, you know, if there's corrosion caused by the battery, one of the first things to cop it is the, uh, the oscillator because it's, uh, it's right near the battery. I keep a supply of those, those sorts of oscillators because regularly on battery damage boards, they're one of the first things to get hit and the first things to fall off. So I just keep a supply of those little, um, wishbone, um, oscillators for the ones for the real time clock. 32768. Thank you very much, Dana. I'm glad someone knew the numbers. Um, mm -hmm. So I was going to need a little bit of a scrapey scrapey afterwards, I think. And of course, we are going to have to put UV mask on a lot of these too. Ow. I really wish I'd worn gloves today. They are so sticky now. So sticky. It's not very comfortable. I'm going to have a bath in isopropyl alcohol. Um, nip, 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 nip. Trace. Look at that ugly trace. Well, the mask is coming off. Up we go. Thank you. Need to when I'm finished with this, I need to be looking at nice shiny copper. We are future proofing. One of the great catchphrases. Future proofing. There are some people that's their job. That's their full time job. Future proofing. What do you do? Oh, I'm a future proofer. What? Dude, that sounds made up. <sighs> okay. Have I got enough solder on this? I'm getting hungry. I better finish this so I can eat. Tummy's rumbling. Just want to uh, jump across here onto the uh, little thing here. I've got 44 viewers at the moment. Hello to 44 people. If you haven't jumped on and said hello, say hello. If you have said hello and I didn't answer, 
please don't take it personally. I just do get distracted, and in particular when you get, you know, this many people on there, I do sometimes miss things in the chat. Um, but it is definitely not personal. Do -do -do. I've already said hello to you, Michael. That doesn't count. Did it down. Same to you. I've said hello to you as well, Jay. What's going on? Hello to people again. Ah, so yes, there's a uh, there is a scheduled game of UT ninety nine for tomorrow, uh, Unreal Tournament ninety nine that has been discussed with the MacYap guys, and we hear them talking about it. I may or may not join in. It is Sunday uh, here when you guys are doing it on your Saturday. It will be my Sunday. I do generally have a, a bit of an issue when I play UT with um, with these guys. Um, two issues. Um, the first issue is that I'm not very good at it. That's issue number one, and that's probably the more important issue. But the other issue is that their server is in America, and I'm in Australia, and the latency on the thing is just ridiculous. Um, so, you know, I end up getting shot before I even know there's anyone there. Now, okay, I know you could turn around and say that just because you're not playing very well, and I accept that, but um, I'm just, uh, I do feel like the latency has a, gives, leaves me at a slightly unfair disadvantage, especially when you consider that I'm very lousy at it. I was not much of a gamer when I was younger, um, or if I was, they were not first person shooters. I did play a bit of Doom and a bit of Wolfenstein and stuff like that, but. Oh, and um, what's that other one called? Duke Nukem. But things like Quake and Unreal, Unreal Tournament, that sort of thing, was never really my thing. Um, so I'm definitely the odd one out from the MacYak gang, seeing as they all pretty much met gaming. <laughs> Uh, oh dear. Phil Exar, hello. Smash that like button. Smash that like button. It's my little uh, American YouTuber impression that I do from time to time which Dana uh, Dana does stuff Dana doesn't remember but I actually got the smash that like button from him pretty sure it was him we are drying UV mask here with a UV laser um, I've been using obviously UV um, mask for a long time and in the past I used to just do it and I'd take it out in the sun or I would put it under a lamp and recap it later on. And what's really nice to have this laser to be able to do this drying right midstream, it's really good. Um, it's uh, very handy. Did a lousy job of cleaning that one, didn't I? I'm actually supposed to be going for a run with my car club tomorrow, but uh, I don't know if I will have time to do that. I have got such a mountain of work on at the moment. Um, 
And of course, I do these uh, live streams when I'm doing a bit of recapping, but to be honest, uh, I can't live stream them all because otherwise it would just take me way too long. And I can't recap when I'm live streaming as fast as when I'm just doing it by myself. Alright, now there's a bit of a dip there, but I don't think it's a break, but I will test it anyway. Beep, 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 beep. And that's me going, beep. You can't probably can't hear it, but it went deep, so we're feeling good about that. That's the one there, that's the one there. We're all good, we're all good. I think that's okay. Yeah, I think that's okay. There's another little stupid one in here. Look at what a stupid place that is for a capacitor. Huh? Who's the idea with that? Okay, now I started at midday today. It is now 2.32, so I've been going for two and a half hours. Um, that's a really long time. Sorry, folks. Um, I do apologize a lot in my live stream, so sorry about that. Um... I mean, I do try and be reasonably entertaining while I'm doing this stuff, rather than just going, all I'm doing is recapping. And I try and learn stuff as well. I want to learn your things. noise about at the moment people doing outdoorsy gardening type things i can hear the sound of i don't know is it a chainsaw it might be a chainsaw or it might be a line trimmer or something like that sorry 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 <laughs> six more hours to go yes indeed Ah, uh, silly comments going on there from my uh, Mac Yuck buddies. So where's uh, Dana does stuff? So Dana, how's your car, mate? Dana had a little bit of a uh, not at fault bingle. As Arnold Schwarzenegger would say in, uh, um, in um, what was that movie called? True Lies. A little bit of excitement in an otherwise dull day. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what was on last night? Last night um, on, on the telly here was, um, um, uh, what was it called? Eraser? Eraser? That was an army film, wasn't it? With, uh, with what's her name? Save the Best Till Last. Um, um, what's her name? You know the one, the chick. And, um, and there was a little, definitely a little bit of the, uh, uh, going on in that. Uh, let's crack up. Good old Arnie, eh? Vanessa Williams, that's the one. Sometimes the sun goes round the moon. That's the one. Uh, that was a hit in 1992. Do you know why I know that? Because I was in hospital in 1992 for a very long period of time. And, uh, and I used to hear that song on the weekend on the uh, uh, sort of the music TV shows that would come on on the weekend. And I would, uh, there was that song and there was Damn I Wish I Was Your Lover. That was another one. I can't remember who that was by, but you know the one. Damn I Wish I Was Your Lover. There was that song and the other one was Mr. Doubleina. Um, that was another one that was getting played all the time. 
Oh, and um, Remedy by the Black Crows. They're the songs I really remember from that time. Nineteen ninety-two. The year of my horrendous motorcycle accident. Okay, I gotta catch up on the chat here. Um, Sophie B. Hawkins, yeah, that was the one. And Mac, I'm fixing it from 1992. What about that? <laughs> Nate, tr 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 I'll just call you Nate. Um, hi, how are you? Thank you for joining. Thank you for saying hello. Yep, so this old Mac Classic 2, I tell you what, I'm sort of definitely earning my money today. This one uh, has been an absolute nightmare. Um, and, and, you know, I keep saying this on my live streams, this is, this is the future. This is what we're going to be looking at. The longer these Macs remain unrecapped, the worse the damage is going to get. And I, as I mentioned before, I haven't done a classic in a long time. I was doing lots of classics for a while there. Seriously, just about every every Mac I was doing or every second Mac I was doing was a classic. But I haven't done a classic in ages. And, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I just sort of feel like there are obviously a lot of these sitting out there now that haven't been recapped. And, oh, boy, they need it. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, they need it. I'm going to be able to start putting caps on this again soon, isn't that great? I was thinking that was never going to happen. Sorry about the uh, fairly, um, what would you call it, phallic, shall we say, shape of this little bit of UV solder mask I've painted on there. It was unintentional, just following the lines of the traces. Not meaning to cause offence to anyone. Oh, there goes a tummy rumble. Definitely time for lunch. Just getting a notification of receiving some money. Not my money though, unfortunately. The car club's money, because I'm the treasurer of the car club. Okay, well, I think I can probably start putting caps onto this now. I think I've cleaned all of the pads. There's a, geez, there were enough of them. 17. All right, now, time for the recapping guide. Where do we keep that? We can keep it here. And then, of course, we're going to have to go on the little uh, treasure hunt to try and find the right caps because I spilt my caps all over the floor the other day and I haven't had a chance to sort them out yet. Like some sort of wally. Okay, so here is the Classic 2 Revision B cheat sheet, which you will find on my website, Recap a Mac. And uh, you will see that there are two versions of the Classic 2. The other version looks like... No, that does, that's not it. Uh, you tell me I don't have a printout of it here. Revision A. Oh, no, yeah, the Revision A was on the other side. This is the revision A here. It's a little bit difficult to see, but if we do this, let's see, there's a revision A board. You can see it has four ROM chips along here. And they're 
are orientated vertically, whereas the other ones are horizontally. And this one only has uh, 13 capacitors on it. Then we go to the revision B board, and you can see we've got these two horizontal ROM chips along here, and we have 17 capacitors. So let's start with the ones we only have a few of. We'll start with two 1 microfarad 50 volts. Now, how do we figure out one? It will be 1 O 5. That'll be the code on it. The code on it will be 1 0 5. So I've got to find, well, first place I'm going to look is the, where I keep them. Because there might still be some in there, and it looks like there are. One zero five, yay. One, two. There we go. Two little capacitors there. They're even from the same batch. You can tell they're from the same batch because they have got the same code on them. Nine three four on the bottom. Nine three four. Um, that number will be different. And the 50, of course, tells me they're 50 volts. So, now, where do these go? Hmm? We've got one there and one there. So, they're in the bottom right-hand corner of these two little clusters. So, we've got one right here, C9. And we've got one down here, C15. See? 15. Crazy tech reviews. Did I, um, did I say hello to you? If I didn't, hello. Um, so, hundred and three subs. Have I hit five k yet? Has anyone has anyone noticed if I've hit five k yet? It's a it's uh, I am so close at the moment. Okay. Yep. There we go. Yes, I got a proper binder folder thingy, thanks to Steve. That was definitely inspired by Steve with that one. I saw his and I thought, oh, I want one. I do like these to be straight when I put them on. Um, just because it makes me feel better when I look at it afterwards. It doesn't matter if they're crooked, it doesn't affect their operation. But, you know, people are paying me to do this. I want to send it back with straight capacitors on it. I can just see if I send it back with crooked capacitors, someone will take a photo and they'll stick it on Facebook or something and go, look at the recapping job that Brankus did. Look at how crooked they are, that's terrible. I don't want that. Don't want that. I don't know it's hard to believe there are people out there saying harsh words on Facebook, but they're they're out there, you know. Sticking these caps on a sea of UV solar mask. Very poetic. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm not at the 5k yet, fair enough. 4.98, so I've got, what, 20 to go or something like that. So I'll, I'll probably hit the 5k tomorrow or tonight. Be nice. It will be nice. Okay, let's see if we can set this thing up. I just wanted to try something for... Oh, jeez, I just think I broke something. Try something for a bit of fun if I can find it. Mm. I've got so many power supplies lying around here. I never know uh, where to find the one I want. Ah, here's the one I want. Right here. So, this is real Bruce Rain bodge job, this one here. But inside this little block box is quite an expensive 12 volt power supply. Um, what I am going to do, just for fun, just for fun, I'm going to solder some of this using, I'm just going to power that up, using this little guy. 
just for fun. Okay, connecting him up to power. What's he say? It's showing me the temperature. Let's see if I can show this on the microscope. It's very small. So I've got this set on 430 degrees Celsius. The tip is, well, it's not heating up at the moment, so why not? Maybe I need to press a button. Power, 100%. Here we go. There's the tip temperature. Climbing, climbing, climbing. I can see it getting hot. It's going to stink because it hasn't been used in a while, so it's probably got dust on it and stuff. Okay, we're sitting at 430 degrees Celsius, which is where I wanted to be. So uh, it's kind of cool this the way the way it works. This is me got it here. So um, let's uh, see if I got. I really should have got some caps first, shouldn't I? I have to put this in here. Yeah. Right. So uh, we've got three forty-seven microfarad sixteen. They're normally the most common capacitor size. What's that one? Nope. This is where it's going to get fun. Just need three of them. Just need three of them. 476. 476. 476. Yay! Lucky dip. Um, so yeah, 47 microfarad. Um, which is 476 is 47 with six zeros after it, which is 46 million um, picofarads, which translates to 47 microfarads. Okay, there's one that goes here. Now, this, is, of course, is going to be a bit of a funny one because he's got wire underneath it, so he's going to be like a seesaw when I solder this one down. Okay, let's get a little... Um, thingy, Get the thingy. Oh, we're tapering down with viewers. We've we found that point. We're down to forty-one now. We've reached the peak and we've gone back. That's what happens. Right, let's see how we go with this one. Oh, I went for the wrong soldering iron. I thought, geez, that feels like my normal soldering iron. That's weird. Um, I'm going to grab this one this time. This is a different soldering iron. Dun, 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 dun. Jab, jab, jab. Get some solder. Hey! Oh, it's going off! What have I done? Why'd it go off? Not a good advertisement. I must have pressed something or done something or. Something happened with something somewhere. Something. Nib 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 nib. Okay. Let's see if we can solve this. Who's coming to visit? That's a pigeon. Come on. There we go. And we're soldering. Um, then the other two. There's one just below the floppy connector, which is just here. Oh, I look, I haven't cleaned it. I got part way through cleaning and didn't finish it. My watch is telling me it's time to stand. This, I'm not sure what happened, why it shut off. It, it, it doesn't like it. See, it's gone off again. I'm either bumping something. Oh, oh, it's the connector. It's this little guy. This little guy. This little guy. That's my plug. Something wrong with it. There's something wrong with it. I'm not going to worry too much about it. But it's certainly not a fault of the uh, soldering iron. It's my uh, 
a lousy barrel connector thingy 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 right let's clean this up that I failed to do before good I have to admit, when I bought that TS100, I didn't buy it because I needed it at all. Um, I, I mean, I really did not need it. I already had, I think, two soldering irons, but um, I was just, uh, I kind of really liked the idea of that little, you know, that you could plug it into the USB port and you could update the firmware and you could do things. I thought, what a cool thing for a soldering iron. And they had all these controls on there where you could go in and customize it. It's really nifty for a soldering iron to be able to do that. So I was purely um, just going with the, uh, the full novelty aspect of it. Um, it seems to be a bit more stable now. But the truth is, it is quite a good soldering iron. The one criticism I have about it is the length, the, the distance between where you hold the soldering iron and where the tip is. I just feel like it's a little bit, a little bit long. Um, when I hold this one, I'm holding it here. And as you can see, this one's got another, oh, probably good inch in length. And of course, the longer that is, then the harder it is to control. So um, that's my only criticism. But, you know, that's something you'd be able to get used to. I am not going to use that. Oh, I will melt plastic. I will melt plastic and then and, and everyone will get upset. I'm going to have to come at this probably at this angle. Um, one of the tips I generally give people when I'm doing soldering is I say you do the easy side of the capacitor first so that the capacitor is sitting in position when you have to do the hard side. So this one here, the one that's obviously the hard side is the side right next to this uh, battery holder because of that plastic. So I've done this side here nice and easy. This is the difficult side. Let's come at this using a bent conical tip. It allows me to get some good heat there and got me that stuck down without not any plastic. So it was a good day. Um, is the polarity right? Yep. Uh, what's next? There's one up here. This is the other one that sucks. I hate this one. Sucks. Um, because look at the, where it's located. What the, what the hay? Holds the temperature nicely. It says it's 429 degrees Celsius at the moment. Company that make this soldering iron apparently also make a um, uh, little um, multimeter tweezers or little component tester tweezers. Okay, that side down. And let's spin him around and work out how we're going to get in there. How are we going to get in there? Can someone tell me how we're going to get in there? Yeah, the, uh, the ones are a little bit too big for that space. Um, I can still get them to sit in there quite happily. Um, but you're right, they are a little bit big. Um, they do make smaller ones, but they're quite a bit smaller. Um, but that's probably what I'd recommend to people. And we're on. Okay, that was the other really difficult one. I mean, there are more, but... Um, yes, any drawback to go down in size? I think these ones are the six millimeter, the ones you're looking at at the moment. They just may not look like that because they're uh, they're um, under the microscope. But if we have a look at these, actually, no, they've got to be bigger, aren't they? Let's have a look. They've got to be. They've got to be. Come on. Yeah, they're six mil. So these ones are six mil that you're looking at. 
The next size down is I think like 3.4 or something like that, so quite a lot smaller. But they will. Okay, so that's all of the 47s on there. All the rest are 10s. 10 microfarad 16 volt, which will have the code of 106. So I've got to find 106s in here. First place I will look is in the 106 section, and I can see there is but one left in there. No, that's a 107. That would make it 100, wouldn't it? Yeah. 10 microfarad 16 volt. 10 microfarad 16 volt. 10 microfarad 16 volt. So they're, 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 I'm, they're all gone. <laughs> None of them are in the original container section anymore. So I'm going to find 12 of them. Uh, 106, there's one. I'm only going to find 12. I'm only going to find 12. 106. I'm going to grab a bunch of these because I think they're all here in this compartment. Do 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 It's going to be a fun job getting these all right back into the right place, isn't it? Okay, 12 of them we need. 12, I say 12. One, oh, that's 476. That's a, oh, okay, so that's that's in the right compartment. 106. Two, 226. 106, 106, 47, Welcome to the capacitor sorting session for today. There's a 106, but it's a different, different brand. I don't like mixing brands. It doesn't hurt. I just don't like looking down and seeing two ones that look different. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Nope. Six. I should mention that there's a whole stack in a little plastic bag here as well. Ah, God, it's annoying, isn't it? Sorry, guys. Me apologizing again. We'll get there. We'll get there. Don't you worry. 106. 106. 106. 106. 106. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. One more. Nope. Yay. We got there in the end, folks. There's 12 capacitors. Let's move them out of the way and hope the capacitor fairies don't come and steal them. As we all know, I have capacitor fairies in the workshop. And if I let my guard down, the capacitor fairies steal capacitors. And I'm not watching. Everybody knows this. It's never been disputed. Okay. Let's uh, do these yucky ones first. So we've got a 16 volt 10 microfarad. Oh. Cripes. Cripes. Okay. I can't see the little uh, the little plus sign, so I've scraped it off. So I'm having to refer to my recapping guide from recappermac.com or .com.au 
if you want to put the AU in. Oh, no, let's try this one still. We're still having fun with our other little one here. It's holding the temperature beautifully. TS100. Made by uh, Cyberdyne Systems. I think I will do this. Do this side first because it's easier. My neighbor's doing some construction or something. And he's making a lot of noise. And I think he's getting upset with whoever he is working with. I see, hear a bit of yelling going on. Okay, this is going to be another seesaw one because that's the one with all of the repairs underneath it. And this one. Come on. Get in there. I'm going to give up on this soldering on in a minute and go back to my normal one. I do prefer it. Okay. <sighs> Nathan Fulton. Hey, I just did this. What did David Fulton just did? Do people use hot air stations to install SMC caps? Yes, they do. I wouldn't with these ones, only because um, if you hit these with hot air, these... Orange tantalum caps, they go brown. I don't think it actually hurts them. It just makes them look awful. Um, you wouldn't with an electrolytic because they have that plastic bit on the bottom, which would melt. Um, but you perhaps would with some of those little tiny black ones that you can get, little black tantalums. No, no, no. Using a different iron. No, 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 no. Heat up. Hey, wake up. Wake up. Oh, it's gone to sleep because the other soldering iron's in there. <laughs> okay. This is definitely a more difficult soldering job here because I have uh, I have this um, all these repairs that are going on underneath these capacitors. Which of course is gonna mean it's not as pretty, but you know we do what we do. I remember there was a, a, a classic um, uh, Lewis Rossman line that he said once on one of his live streams. He was working on a computer and it had all sorts of problems and he'd done this incredible network of uh, trace repairs all across the board, all these wires running over there. And someone in the live stream turned around and said, what are you going to tell the customer about that? And he said, I'll tell the customer I've fixed your, fixed your Mac. And I thought, yeah, good, good call, good comeback. <laughs> At the end of the day, if it works, successfully recapped a dead Mac Classic 2 motherboard and analog board thanks to you. Congratulations. That is awesome. That is what I like to hear. I do like to hear that the stuff that I'm doing is helping because uh, that is the purpose of it. It serves two purposes. Number one, keep me entertained while I'm doing this. And then the other is obviously helping out people, um, getting them, you know, sort of giving them an opportunity to see what it's like. Doing the recapping, see what uh, potential problems they might encounter and potentially how to fix those problems if you encounter them. All that sort of stuff. We're getting close, you know. I know it doesn't seem like it, but we are getting close. This is going to be... Um, we're going to be repaired. So I'm going to probably just stick with this um, thin... Um, bent convex, um, what do you call it, uh, iron tip, because I think it will work best for this board, because it has so many of these things up against plastic. 
and I can generally get this into tighter nooks and quennies. By the time I finish this live stream, I think I'll have gone through hungry and come out the other end. Really should have eaten before I did this. I had something that I had to do this morning before I started the live stream. And uh, it's the time that I would have spent eating food, eating breakfast. Um, so I had to go and meet someone. And I literally had to say to that person, look, I've got to go. We've got a live stream starting in 12 minutes. I darted home. I had set everything up beforehand so that I could just come in here and start streaming. Uh, wrong ones. There we go. Oh, cripies. What happened there? Out of control. There we go. That's a bit better. How to eat like Bruce section. Yes. I don't know. I've actually, I, I, I think I mentioned this before. I would love to do a little, uh, a little cooking thing because I, uh, I've got a few recipes that I've made up over the years that I'd love to share with people. <laughs> a lot of flipping around of this board, sorry about that. Because we're working in tight spaces, you just, you know, you've got to just find the right angle, the angle that's going to work best for you. Right. Run, 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 run. Cooking with Bruce, yeah. So, um, yeah, so it, uh, it, 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 it may surprise some, but I am actually a fairly uh, avid cook, cooking type person. I do all the cooking in this household. It's not because my wife can't cook. It's just simply that I probably enjoy it more. I'm probably, I've probably got maybe better knife skills, I suppose, but uh, um, I just love cooking. So I do all the cooking in the house and... Uh, over the years, I've sort of uh, developed some recipes, modifying other people's recipes and improving on other people's recipes and all that sort of stuff. And um, um, yeah, I just, you know, some of them I'd like to share. Some of them are like real quick, easy meals, and some of them are more complex meals. How to impress people on a budget. I've got a few. Um, I've got a few meals that are ones that like that make it really look like you know what you're doing. In actual fact, it's a really basic. It's a basic recipe. What I refer to as bachelor meals. Um, ones that you can uh, impress people with. Is it still possible to use some flux that is a couple of years old? I'm not sure if it's still good, but I was just wondering, well, can I tell you something that's never stopped me? I've used flux that's been outside of its, uh, its use-by date, and it's worked fine for me. I mean, I'm sure that it's maybe not as effective as, uh, as it would have been if it was still in, in within the date, but I promise you it'll be better than using no flux at all. Um, yeah, I've quite happily used out-of-date flux before. These days, I don't end up with out-of-date flux much because I go through so much of it. But in the olden days, that I would have a big tub of flux or tube of flux there that might sit for donkey's years. Um, and so, uh, uh, yeah, so 
I've never had any issues with um, out of date flux before. So there you go. This one that I've been using quite a bit, this uh, no clean flux that I've been using uh, before, I mean, this has got to be out of date because this is ancient. I'm not even sure if it has a date on it. it. Tells me what lot it is. Can't see a date. It might have had a date, but it's all worn off. But yeah. Okay, we'll push you back down again. Little Mister Oscillator. Let's get a uh, little cap on here now. That neighbour is noisy. Quiet. Plus is up that way. It is too. You only put this one on backwards. Wouldn't want that. soldering right next to the CPU here. It's our pretty little 68030 running at 16 megahertz. I realize that's upside down, but I'm sure you can still read upside down. Nothing to write home about. So who here knows what was the fastest 68030 Mac that Apple made and what was the megahertz of it? Anyone? 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 I will have a look at that later, Nathan. I won't be able to do that right now. Okay. 2VX. Okay, so what was the... Uh, it was the... Um, yeah, so the 2VX, I thought it was 33. So the uh, 2FX was 40. I'm pretty sure the 2FX was the fastest of the uh, 030 computers. Um, and of course, one of the rather expensive collectibles of these days. Used its own funky RAM. Just to make life harder for us collectors. So I swear, I, it's... I don't know what this person is doing next door, but it sounds like a chainsaw. I, I just, I don't, I don't think he's got any trees left in there. So what on earth could he be chainsawing? He was one of those people that chopped all the trees down when he moved in. Melted one of the ROM sockets still works. Yeah, melting is a uh, is just one of the things that happens. Um, I when, when I very first recapped my Color Classic, long time ago now, but I recapped my Color Classic. I managed to melt the plastic socket down the bottom, and so of course that's a. I took a photo of the recapped board, but of course it's not one of the photos that I show people because I don't want to show people my melting skills. Um, even though, as I say, it is a, uh, it's just something that happens in the early days. I still melt things from time to time these days. And look at that. That's melty. I am going to clean that up though. So it doesn't look quite so melty. And I do that with a scalpel like this. And I just chop the edges off it. Chop, itty, chop. Chop. There we go. Can't see the melt anymore, can you? Nope, all gone. Both monkey. Okay, plus that way, plus that way, plus that way, plus that way, there. Good. Let's do this one here with a busted trace. Let's 
So I'm going to get that on there. And I'm going to get this one here. I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to do this side first. See, I know these things. Yeah, see, Jay's not big on the old beige, Max. Um, so I'm quite impressed that he knew that, even though about 10 people have already answered it. So, you know. But I tell you what, if you want to uh, find about find out about some of the later Max, Jay's pretty good on your old G3s and G4s and whatnot. Uh, hell of a lot more knows a hell of a lot more about those than I do. Okay, so this is my little trace repair. I'll probably just sit him here like that. He doesn't need to be perfect. Um, let's get some. Fluxaroonie in there. I might just get the uh, wire tinned first. Get a little bit of solder on that. So I'm just melting the enamel off that wire so that when I put this under here, it will be soldered. There we go. So the good thing about that trace repair is that it's still sitting on a pad. So it's nice and strong, it's nice and secure. It's just we're using this little wire to re-establish that connection up into that little hole there. So there's another little trace repair. This one has had its fair share of trace repair. Three more caps to go, people. Three more caps and then we'll have the famous unveiling and testing and whatnot. Turfx was quite a bit slower than the Quad 700, even though the Turfx was 40 megahertz, the Quad 25 megahertz, the O4 was much better. That's exactly right. Big difference with the O40, and and you can just tell it from, uh, you know, when you use them. You know, because I do that. I, you know, obviously with using these vintage Macs, sometimes I. Go in and I, I play around with an 030, and sometimes I go around and play with an 040, and those 040s were definitely faster than the 030, but as they should be. Whoopsie dinky. Sudder. So here is a little jumper thingy here, 512k PROM, 1 megabyte PROM, 2 slash 2 megabytes. That is for a selection for what you plug into this port here um, that, again, Apple never released a product for. They were made, but they just weren't made by Apple. Okay, we're getting there. Here's another one in a really stupid position. Stupid. You know, as we get closer and closer, and given the fact that it's been going now for over three hours, I look at this and I think to myself, when I go actually to connect this, I give it probably about a 70% chance of working. And I think to myself, how disappointing is it going to be if it doesn't work, having people sat there and watch for three hours and then plug it in and find that it doesn't work. That would just be so disappointing. So I just want to set expectations now because I do think there is a chance that that will be the case. Um, ouch. So I didn't actually burn myself. I just said ouch in readiness. Tip hot. Right, I'm just using the other soldering iron here because I'm just using the other tip. I'll just be able to get the solder onto this easier with this one. Boop, 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 boop. Got a little bit of um, spider's web on it here, you can see. Good measure. 
90 megahertz Carrera 040. How about that? She's a bitch. That generates some heat. Uh, one more. One more. Here we go. Oh, that smells. What's cooking soldering on? This uh, board, unfortunately, it's not going to look as nice as some of the other ones I recapped there. But, you know, as long as it works, can't be helped. If we want to blame anyone for that, Who we, we blame people who don't actually recap their boards when they need recapping. That's often not the fault of the person who, who owns this, because, I mean, this guy could well have just bought it like this. Um, Brankus, personally, I don't care one bit if it works or explodes. I'm watching for the work, not the end result. Well, thank you very much for saying that. Um, okay. 2FX has got a blazer system six. It's, um, uh, this is, again, is something that I have mentioned in my live streams before. I used to own a Mac 2, and one day, just for a little bit of fun, I put system three, four, five, I can't remember which one it was, one of the really early Mac systems on it. And the thing flew. It just blew me away. I was like, oh my God, this thing is fast. Yep. You've got to use uh, software of the period if you really want these things to go, uh, go as fast as they can. These days, it's very hard to do that um, with more modern Macs because we were talking about this on the Mac Yak show the other day. Um, I mean, it's like, for instance, if you take uh, system OS 10.4, Four. If you could use 10.4 uh, and you fire up Safari, you can't visit any websites because of the change to the, um, the, you know, the security protocols now. So all of those old browsers don't work. The only way you can visit a website is if you're using something like 10.4 Fox or, uh, you know, sort of later on, what's that other one called? WebKit. Um, and it can be really, you know, really disappointing. Um, so, uh, yeah, you just kind of get forced into having to upgrade so you can keep up with things. So, just going to check all these caps. Uh, we've got two pluses to the left, and plus to the left, plus to the right, yes. Plus, 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 yes. Checking the polarity of these. Plus down, plus up, plus left. Plus left, plus left, plus right, plus left, plus bottom. Yep, okay, I've checked all the polarity. It's pretty easy with these caps. I mean, I've checked all of the ones. Uh, I, I know uh, it's just the first three I'll check. Uh, five there, and one at five there, and all the rest of 106s, and 47 here, 47 there, and with the 47 there. Okay, so we're, it's time to test. We're going to test this sucker. Yes, we are. Let's put some RAM into this little fella first. So let's go to which view shall we go? Let's go to the side view, shall we? Shall we? So, RAM, Black Benny, RAM, LM. Ten four eleven with the latest supported version of Firefox and ad blocker is a beast. Hmm. I didn't think. It, can you can you view current websites with that? Can you, Joe? My hands are so thirsty. I hate it. Right, let's get my classic up here. This is my classic too. I'm not sure if this one has a uh, a good analog board in it. I think it does. I don't think I would have put any of these away without a good analog board. I can't be bothered testing that now. So. I just feel like mucking around with vintage computers for the rest of the day, but I don't think I will be afforded that opportunity. I'm going to pull out one. Probably not 
Quadra 700 or... Yeah, actually, you know what I want to do? I want to fix up my Mac 2. I've got a Mac 2 board that needs a bit of trace repair. It's mine. Mine. Not someone else's, but mine. Okay. Um, should I put these? I might put these in a little Ziploc. For a safe keep in here. Grew up with two effects, but it died in a power surge and my dad tossed it. Yep. Yep. My dad tossed my Mac 2 as well. He didn't. I mean, he he okayed it with me. He said, you're never going to use this again, are you? I said, no, probably not. I wonder if I would have kept it if I hadn't have been nudged like that. Like, don't knock into saying that or anything like that. It's understandable. Logical thing to do. Um, I need to take, take the back of this off. Um, the classics and classic twos can sometimes be really sticky. The way I do them is like this, I'm right-handed, I get my right hand with all my nails in there. Don't ever use a screwdriver, of course, you will uh, bend the plastic. You can use things like this, this sort of thing. <laughs> um, but I generally just have one hand here held flat like that, I get a good good uh, purchase on it there, I think of nails here and I go Ring! like that with my big man hands. Okay, off comes the back. This one has a hard drive in it. It looks like a period correct hard drive too. <laughs> I wonder if it still works. I can't imagine I would have put it away if it didn't. Okay, this looks like a revision A board in here. You can tell because it's got a little green wire snaking across it. Uh, you should use your laser to sign sign your repairs on the board of the case. Yeah, I'm sure people would love that. I really do need to make up a sticker to stick on the boards, you know, recapped by Brankers. Haven't got that yet. So this is a revision A board. Um, you can see, as I say, well, here's the comparison between the two. Uh, they are quite different. And the really early ones had this little bodge wire, little blue wire snaking its way across the board. Someone stuffed up somewhere. Who screwed the pooch? Someone stuffed up and they had to put that on there. As you can see, I've converted this into a CR2032 battery, PRAM battery as well. I've stopped doing that to the boards that I work on. I used to do it to all of them, but these days I've just found it's just as easy to use a half double A. I can get hold of the half double A's nice and easy. Uh, okay, so RAM, things, caps, stuff, trace repairs, lots, things. Um, yeah, I saw your little sticker, um, Steve, and I'm extremely envious. Um, I want mine in colour, though. Yours, I noticed, was in black and white. I want the little blue eye on there, so people have got the Brankus eye watching. There's a bit of corrosion on the plug on this, this one here. I can see, you might be able to see there's some green going on there. I'm hoping that that's gonna, not going to cause any major problems. Has this been recapped? Yes, this has been recapped. This has definitely been recapped. Um, so I'm hoping that it's going to work. Has it been cleaned by me though? Ba -ba -ba -ba. It's hard to tell. It does look pretty clean. So it probably has. Okay, that's the floppy drive. That. That's the hard drive. That. Bit of scuzzy action. So we're all connected up. Let's see what happens when we fire it up. This is the moment we have all been waiting for, or not. But it's certainly the point at which I can get paid for this job. Um, okay, plugging in 240 AC volts. <sighs> How you feeling? Eh? We all feeling good? We feeling confident? Yeah? Yeah? What do you say? What do you say? Look at my little microphone. I'll hold it near the speaker. I'll take the microphone off like this. Hold it near the speaker so we can hear a chime. If there's a chime. Okay, we ready? Three, two, one. <gasps> Chimed. And it farted first, but it did chime. I mean... <laughs> I'm putting my microphone back on. Sorry about all the noise. 
I think this hard drive could be cactus, but we'll see. I wouldn't be at all surprised if we end up seeing a, yeah, a flashing question mark. I honestly, it's not even spinning up. Oh, got it. That's a noise and a half that hard drive just made. I think it's one of the ones with the the, the sticky rubber. Because it's making that sort of noise of, of, of the thing not moving. That sounds terrible. All right. Um, what if... What? 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 I'll be back in just a moment, folks. So you guys can uh, enjoy the uh, view of this beautiful screen here while I... Uh, duck up to the house and I grab a SCSI 2SD and we can spin it up and actually look at it working like a proper Macintosh. So um, I, I would normally put on the be right back, back, back soon thingy, but I, I don't want you to miss out on the joy of viewing this, uh, this thing. So back soon. Hello. Right. Didn't explode, did it? We're all good. So, let's plug in some SCSI action. There we go. Happy face, happy face, happy face, smiling happy face. Plug in the clue board. Let's get my mouse. Right. Did I ever have a working fix and after ultrasonic it died? Yes, I did. I have. I've got one here. Driving me insane. Um, right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to all the compliments from people. I do appreciate it. Let's just go up and have a look in the about this. I wonder how much memory this has got in it. Uh, four. So it's only got, what is it? There's two on board, I think, plus another two, something like that. Does that sound right? Um, so anyhow, it works. Um, let's, uh, let's see if we can find uh, some sort of, uh, I think I've got games on disc three. Yeah. Open, open, open. Why isn't it opening? I, I know why. Because I'm pressing the keyboard now. Stop it. Okay. Stupid. 
There we go. So I've got here my multi-boot system. This is the one that I, when I'm setting up uh, SCSI 2 SDs for other people, I generally put this system on there. Uh, and I've got a section here called games. And then I've got a section here called lots more games. And in this lots more games, I think there's quite a lot of these that are designed to work on uh, on these old Macs. Like I think this one here, Mac Man. Please, Mac Man will not operate with the RAM cache on. What the? What the? Memory, 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 memory. Ram, disk cache always, RAM cache, with, where's, I don't know, where's the RAM cache? I don't know, I'm not, okay, we're clearly not going to be playing that one. Um, what do we got, what do we got? What, does anyone have a, a game preference here? You probably can't see what we've got. Uh, I've got, uh, what's Arkanoid? Arkanoid's that, like, um, Asteroids type thing, isn't it? Are you going to work for me? Sorry, Arkanoid is unable to allocate or turn audio and screen buffers it needs. I think these are games that are perhaps a little bit uh, too advanced for this. Um, Gunshy. I think I know that one. Let's have a look see. New. I'm exhausted heading to bed. Thank you, Dana. Uh, you've had a busy day. There's no doubt about that. And uh, we expect to see a video of all about it at some stage too. So thank you for watching, Dana. I do appreciate it. Um, and this is one of these matchy tile games. How dull. Can anyone find the other Mac? Where's the other Mac? There is one. Can I get to it though? No, he's trapped. I am bored already. I am bored already. I am bored already. I can't be bothered playing this. Match. Match. Bang. I did one. There we go. All right. Well, I think that's it. I think uh, I have uh, uh, saved the game. No. I think uh, everyone has shown incredible patience sitting through this um over three and a half hour live stream but we did get it working it was there was a reward at the end there was a, a working logic board which is fantastic i'm extremely pleased to say that 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 it did work at the end because i really i certainly wasn't completely sure it was going to be the case so um i am just going to jump across to the this is my goodbye camera this is my goodbye camera so uh, thank you everyone for watching. I do appreciate it. There were quite a few people on here. If you did uh, leave a comment or a chat or something like that and I didn't respond, I do apologize. I do miss some. Don't take it personally. I uh, hope to uh, see you at the uh, next live stream that I do. And I've also got some pre-recorded stuff, some interesting stuff coming up soon. So I hope you uh, you all enjoy that. So thank you to everyone who watched. Thank you to the regulars. Thank you to the new viewers. I really appreciate it. And I will see you at the next one. So bye-bye. And then he looks for the end button.